The Angry Chicken is a production of AMove TV. Bookmark AMove.tv for more gaming and esports shows. The Angry Chicken is directly supported by listeners like you via patreon.com slash TAC. podcast about Hearthstone, Heroes of Warcraft. This is the Angry Chicken. Greetings and welcome back, everybody. It's a fresh, cracked episode of TAC. I'm Garrett Weinzerl. With me, as always, Willie Dills Gregory and Jocelyn Moffat. How are you guys doing this week? It's the first time we're. I, yeah, I'll go ahead and I'll just I'll jump in so Joss can uh, can, <laughs> can chill out. I'm doing great. Uh, apparently, Jocelyn is feeling under the weather, so we'll, we'll try to yep. carry you today. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> Do our best. The, 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 the Dills and I will connect like uh, two uh, Power Rangers Zords into the form of uh, of, of Sam from from Lord of the Rings, and we'll carry you up the the, the <laughs> treacherous mountain that is. 30 yeah, plus card reveal since wise. the last episode. I was really, really confused with where you were going with that because I was like, hang on, when like the Power Rangers do things, they need all of them. That's the That's point. True. Yeah. yeah, what happens if a Power Ranger calls in sick? They just yeah. lose? <laughs> <laughs> well, if only the two... The world is just destroyed. That's the end of it. <laughs> yeah, when only when only two Zords connect, it's it's a Hobbit-sized Zord. So it works. It uh, checks out. Okay. <laughs> it checks out. So I like it. <laughs> Any, I'm glad that everyone here got that. By the way, that that for once I could I could make a Power Rangers and Lord of the Rings joke, and everyone's just like, "Yeah, I'm on board. I get it. <laughs> we're good." Well, obviously, uh, I mean, there's there, we're not. It's gonna be another bumper light episode because we have, uh, I believe, the final count is thirty four cards. Thirty four cards. Thirty four yeah. cards to talk about today. So that's gonna be the episode for the most part. That and there's no other news outside of card reveals. And the fact that about an hour ago, we finally got an official release date. Um, and to the surprise of no one, Kobolds and Catacombs has been confirmed to be releasing on December 7th. Yeah. We also did get uh, the official free rewards announcement. So we're going to get three card packs if you log in after release. So there you go. Bang. And a legendary weapon will just be handed to you. Right. Uh, so it's not like a thing you got to do to get the legendary weapon card. And then through your first three dungeon runs, you'll get a quest for those. So you will get a pack for doing the dungeon run at least the first three times. Okay. So okay. I don't know if you guys read, did you actually like read the interview article on, I think it was Metabomb where they were talking about the rewards and they were saying that they gave us the war- rewards up front so that they didn't give any rewards for dungeon run. Did you guys read that? <laughs> no, I did not read that. That's what they said. They were like, we're giving yeah. you the packs and the legendary up front so that you don't feel like you have to run Dungeon Run. So I was like, to, yeah, and now here you go. You have to run no! the Dungeon Run to get your free packs. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, look, I, I think that's that's kind of dumb to say that we <sighs> don't want people to be forced to do the Dungeon Run. It's the new content. Like, obviously, incentivize us doing it, right? Yeah. Um, it, this just makes sense to me because you got a pack for completing all the wings, right? And uh, Nice of the Frozen Throne. Why wouldn't you want to be giving us stuff to get us to actually click that new button that you're adding? So I that, would this just so makes much sense. rather like not get that legendary weapon. Like if they think that I'm the rewards or whatever over the course of the life of the content, I would rather just not get the legendary card up front and give me something else to do for my grind. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> like, give me dust. I, give me I'd gold. I'd rather have both, just, but sure. Well, I, I, I would rather, I mean, obviously, rather have both. I mean, but we, we feel like we have to make a deal is, with them. <laughs> yeah, if the choice is give me a legendary up front or, because it's a it's a random one too, right? I don't get to yeah. pick, so I could get a crappy legendary and no, then I just... <laughs> yeah, it's just going to be like the, the Death Knights, which uh, if you guys remember, both of you uh, poo-pooed me when I poo pooed the fact that I randomly got the Garrosh Death Knight, I was like, "Oh man, I'm not excited about the Garrosh Death Knight." And you're like, "Oh, it's fine. It doesn't matter if you don't usually play Warrior. You should be happy you got it. Go have fun with it." And it turned out to be the worst Death Knight in the set. 
No, it sees play. Yeah, There's other Death Knights that don't see play. Rexar yeah. definitely sees less play than, than Garrosh. Yeah, but Rexar is actually Rexar. cool and fun. Garrosh is, really is good boring and, yeah, and but, not good. Yeah. But there's like a meta deck that uses that uses Garrosh. So, you know. You're not, you're not but helping you're Here's, here's how analogy. broken we are is like expecting rewards from, from Hearthstone <laughs> right now. We're willing to like deal, make a deal. We're willing to wheel and deal and give yeah. up other free stuff. Like that's... We can't. We don't even feel entitled enough to say. I think we should have all of it. We go like, you know what? Here's the thing. I'll give you this back yeah. if you give me more you stuff. Just give me this thing. Oh yeah. God, right? That's crazy. We should just be asking for all of it. <laughs> oh, I'm a broken, broken woman. This dungeon run and their rewards has just broken me. <laughs> all right. So, so here's where my brain goes, Justin, because I didn't even know about that meta bomb article. Uh, all I know is that we were told on our show that there were no rewards besides a card back for Dungeon Runs. So even yeah, without right. knowing that, my brain yeah. goes, oh, we're getting three packs, but we have to play Dungeon Runs to get through them. Uh, to me, that just goes, you know, like they heard feedback from the announcements of, of, no, <laughs> of, of no, like, no incentive yeah. to play the Dungeon Run. And they went, well, we we're going to give three packs anyway. Why don't we just lock them behind Dungeon Runs? It, it looks bad. It looks bad, like, publicly. Yeah. I don't understand. The other problem here, too, is you're technically taking stuff away from us to give us this pack because you're taking away a quest, right? So, mm. like, well, now I, we I have mean, to have a quest open to get this quest? Yeah. A quest would be fine, too, if they wanted to say, like, hey, do a Dungeon Run and, you know, like, get 60 gold or something because Dungeon Runs are long and time-consuming. So, yeah, like, do a dungeon run, get a reward. If that was a quest that popped up every once in a while, that'd be fine, too. Just give me a reason yeah. to go into that content. Yeah, they should definitely have that as, as one of the things. Because then then at some point after, once I've done it with all nine classes, gotten the card back, I will never have a reason to push that button again. Unless if, I find it super, super fun. Back, which, yeah, if the card back is even worth you doing in the first place. I mean, in, in terms of the, the quest, when we've gotten expansion quests in the past, haven't they been in addition to your regular one regular one quest a day so, yeah, yeah, so yeah, if you are caught up you should be fine quest, but you have to you still have to clear a couple slots out it, that's not that hard to do that's i don't think that's that's that big of an no, ask but i have like, to do it on three accounts i don't know yeah whatever <laughs> yeah, oh, it, but... it doesn't have to be a quest it could just be a reward <laughs> that pops up but I, the, the reason for being a quest is fine too because then people actually know it's there right i'm, yeah. I'm not it's asking some hidden thing that you don't know is there like getting 100 gold when you, you beat all the ai's that mm -hmm. no one knew about, right? Until yeah. yeah. It's like, oh, what? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I, I also want to point out that I, I'm not asking Team 5 to to build the game around you, uh, Dills, and the five other people that play on all three accounts. <laughs> no. No. But it's, that still it doesn't defeat the point that, like, there's this isn't the only way to do it, right? No, no. If I mean, there was just rewards all the time, you wouldn't have to do this at all. Yeah. Right? I, I'm, the, the bright side I'm taking from this is like, I hope those dungeon run quests come back up and I hope they're for a pack, just a straight up pack. That would be mm -hmm. great. Like, although yeah, I if it, that's what I'm saying. If it just never goes away, like I, if we just always had a quest that was in our pool of things that could possibly happen to us in Hearthstone, then that would be a reason for me to go back in. Yeah, because because I'm yeah. still very excited for dungeon runs. I, I've never, I'm not a, I'm not a big streamer in general. I just stream live podcasts. I have zero interest in streaming Hearthstone because I don't feel like uh, getting corrected constantly by twenty different people watching me live. Um, but I want to stream dungeon runs. It seems like a really fun thing to go through and kind of pal around with people in a chat room with. Uh, so please any any incentive would make me happy so if they just if if every now and then this quest pops back up after launch bring it on yep oh. i'm with that that's a good way to do it i mean i still prefer kind of the eternal model where it's just you have the option to grind it if you want um but it doesn't get you rewards very fast it just is another way to get them right mm -hmm. right it's for people who don't really have good collections right yeah. so I, yeah. I have not disagreed with any that's, any uh, suggestions either of you two have made on the show as to how to incentivize dungeon runs in a way that would be inefficient, but at least there would still be an incentive to play. Yeah, because it's still more efficient than trying to play on the ladder with a terrible selection of cards, right? Like that's if 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 the li least efficient way for me to get stuff was dungeon run, or like if the most efficient way was it to do that, then to lose over and over and over again and maybe sometimes win, you know, that would still be okay. That's an option for other people, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And then for me, I obviously I have all the cards. My my best option is not dungeon run, so I would not be doing those. Uh, but like you know, my friend Ty, who has spent all of the 
what is it, fifteen dollars to buy the the invitational the whatever thing, the beginners pack thing. That's all he spent. It is hard for him to win, man. Mm-hmm. Even at like break twenty three. So I want it for him. I think that's Good fair. For Ty. <laughs> I think that's totally fair. <laughs> totally fair. So well, whatever the case, we'll get a we'll get our get a chance to test this out, you know, live when it goes up December seventh, and I'm sure we'll we'll have some thoughts then. Maybe maybe we'll like it more than we thought. You know, who knows? But uh, before we move on into just uh, an entire episode of Card Talk, we do have some top of the show news to discuss. Dills, the the uh, the angriest chicken open, Frozen Throne, is right around the yes. corner. What's new with that? Frozen Taco is open to all. Uh, we have a link in the show notes. It is also tweeted out on the Angry Chicken uh, Twitter account. You can also find I retweeted it and everything. So, uh, But essentially, if you just go to amove.tv slash news slash Frozen Taco, you will find the uh, the link. We are only at like 32 players or something like that. So chances are high that you can win that uh, that random, uh, you know, uh, money certificate, you know, gift certificate. So <laughs> money certificate. come on in, everybody. Money certificate. Yeah. Random battle Hello, net sir, balance gift card. I have a money certificate. Card. I would like card. <laughs> I would like one product, please. Yes. <laughs> For yes. my money certificate. <laughs> our uh, our two finalists will will are guaranteed gift cards, but we're also giving two random ones away to folks on yep. the uh, just on the bracket. So sign up. It'll be a good time. Uh, it's this weekend, yeah, by the way. it's going to be a lot of fun, and it'll be uh, on Saturday. Um, I will be available all day, so I'll be fi- kind of following along. And uh, we will be streaming the semifinals and finals, I believe, uh, if, if all goes according to plan. So, yes, come on in. <laughs> all right, check it out. Uh, Jocelyn, how about yourself? Uh, the only thing that I really have to talk about this week is the fact that, yes, and I'm a broken record, and I will be until the end of December, but... Extra Life donations are still open. You could go to bit.ly slash TGI Extra Life 2017 if you'd like to donate to our campaign to help the Children's Miracle Network. We've raised over $4,000 as a team so far. We had a really, really great year, but donations are still open. So if you're in the giving mood this holiday season, then uh, the Children's Miracle Network is a really awesome, awesome cause to support. That's badass. Definitely keep checking it out, folks. We've mentioned this on multiple podcasts already, but the donations are still open. Uh, I don't really have anything in particular to promote this week, but I did host Dreamer Showdown uh, yesterday. That VOD should be up on Chan Man V's YouTube channel. I had a lot of fun doing it. Uh, and uh, Disguised Toast is inhuman, guys. That guy has won <laughs> every single Hearthstone edition of Streamer Showdown he has been on. Uh, but this one was close. It was real close. So if you haven't seen it, go and check it out. You also get to hear Shiro barking. <laughs> well then it's worth it it's absolutely worth it come on like Shiro, Shiro should have been the contestant I love Brian Kibler but Shiro should have just been uh, should have been Doge game the whole time oh so. <laughs> uh, well uh, we have a sponsor to thank for this episode Harry's.com is back they are back you've heard us talk about Harry's before uh, and uh, you've also heard us talk about why why we like them uh, Dills and I both very very bearded gentlemen Jocelyn couldn't grow a beard even if she wanted to uh, but all three of us are fans of their blades. We keep using them. We've actually shelled out our own, you know, few dollars here and there to keep uh, to, <laughs> to keep up with the Harry's blades. Uh, but they are back with their with their gift boxes. Finding gifts are always a pain. I, I get excited for to shop for some people, but most not. No, no, most people. So if you're listening to this and you know me, I probably don't like shopping for you. Uh, luckily. <laughs> Harry's makes it easy. They've got gift, gift boxes, man. They've got custom limited edition shaving sets. They come with those German engineered five blade cartridges we've talked about before. They've come with those shaving gels that smell awesome. Uh, they come in special limited edition winter chrome or emerald green handles. I want that emerald green handle. Yeah, the chrome is dope. I love the chrome <laughs> one. Oh, no, opting for the chrome does. Okay. Mm-hmm. Did you? Did you? I per- like the shinies. Did you personalize it with an engraving? To do like your, you always joke about the arcade, like ASS. <laughs> I did not, but you know, I had the option. Now you're regretting it. <laughs> <laughs> I've uh... been your ass razor. <laughs> <laughs> then you never forget which one goes where. That's all I'm oh, saying. Oh, <laughs> jeez. Oh, Jocelyn <laughs> taking it so much further than it needed to go. <laughs> I was going to go with a Stranger Things 2 reference and say I'm, I'm putting Max on it, but fine. Fine. <laughs> Thanks, Joss. Thank you for that. Um, You're well, welcome. Well, <clears throat> beyond that, they still they come in those beautifully designed gift boxes we mentioned before. They start at just $10, and some of them even fit 
in those oversized socks you like to put over your fireplace. Uh, and yes, I live in Florida. We still have a fireplace. I don't know why. Don't worry about it. Uh, but check it out. Go to Harry's. Give Harry's. Give Handsome. And uh, enjoy the free shipping that's happening right now before the holidays. To go get your limited edition holiday shave set, go to harrys.com slash TAC while supplies last. And that's, again, harrys.com slash TAC. We also have some patrons, I think, today, folks. As always, this episode is also brought to you by our patrons supporting us over at patreon.com slash TAC. And on this episode, we want to thank Jevin F., Tom U., Chad B., Anthony T., Justin H., I hope that one, at least, of the 35 cards we're about to talk about makes all five of those patrons very excited today. That would be great. But now, it is time to do what we came here to do, and that's talk about a butt-ton of cards. To your left is a door with a sign on it that says, Adventurers Keep Out. To your right is a door with the words, Certain Death, scrawled on it. Steal yourselves, adventurers. We're going in. I want certain death. I want it. <laughs> I want it. All right. So we're jumping back into Druid this week, I believe, with only one new Druid card reveal that we have not yet talk about, talked about. I will make a sentence eventually. Uh, Grizzled Guardians up first. This is an 8-mana, 3-5 rare Druid beast that has taunt and a death rattle that reads, Recruit two minions that cost four or less. What do we think of a Grizzled Guardian here? Besides, it's really pissed. Well, an 8-mana 3-5 is terrible. Um, <laughs> that's, yeah, that's first and foremost. But if uh, if there's, like, an argument for this card, it's that maybe this is there's some sort of cool uh, Hadronox and Nazoth deck out there, right? Um, and if that's the case, then, yeah, probably you can afford to play an 8-mana 3-5. <laughs> that you know dies and drops a couple of random t- uh, four four or less minions. Like if they're both taunt minions, and then Hadronox brings them back. Okay, I could see something there. But yeah, you pay a lot for that upfront three five body. Um, yeah, yeah. So it ne- there needs to be, and I, and I'm thinking in standard right now. There's not enough good four or less taunt minions to really make this a thing, but. I will try it out. I feel like in wild, you know, there's some there's some better options out there. So maybe that's well, they don't, that's where it belongs. They don't but. have to be taunt minions. No, 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 they don't. But I mean, no, I but just, that's like, how the synergy might. If you're work finding well synergies with, with yeah. this card, yeah, 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 yeah I don't yeah, know. I, I feel like you're probably not gonna. If you're not doing something super synergistic, you're probably not playing eight mana three fives, right? Like no. you just, that's not gonna be good enough. And yeah, you do. You, could you use do that end dude up that with gets, three minions uh, eventually, but yeah, yeah. You know. You could do the uh, the dude that gets health every time you get another minion. The uh, the three mana one five. The, yeah, the really annoying one. Yeah, sure. sure. <laughs> it just yeah, it seems like it, to, for but this yeah, to really expensive. be a thing, you have to you have to be having some sort of end game goal here. Otherwise, like you're probably not just playing this as just oh here's a decent minion that pulls two more minions when it dies. You know what yeah. I mean? Um, yes, so, yeah, Crypt Lord. I, I don't know. Thank I'm you, not Cat convinced. Room. I'm I'm pretty sure this is bad. Yeah, if it's a battle cry, I'd be a lot more interested. But that's a mm, uh, yeah. you're throwing a death rattle okay, out there. Both, you're hoping yeah, you it's immediately not... play three minions onto the board. Yes, right. But... Yes, exactly. But 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 three five for eight, hoping that that death rattle doesn't get jinxed by some type of transformation spell or a silence. That's a huge risk that I'm not lining up to take. Sure. So. Yeah, and but again, like the meta might be slow enough that it's okay to play eight eight mana three fives. So that might be the case because I'm looking at a lot of the cards that are being released in this set and i'm not seeing a ton of awesome aggro tools yet right Mm -hmm. so it does feel like the meta is going to slow down quite a bit and if that's true then you might have time to set up a grizzled guardian into a hadronox nizoth type of thing because think about bringing this guy back with with nizoth or hadronox right like Mm. suddenly he's really good recruit does recruit has to come from your deck right so it comes from this guy's death so if you brought this back it would do it again no, no, I know, but that you still have to have minions in your deck, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so you'd still have to have, like, <laughs> enough yeah, so small like minions. Late in game, your, like, you might yeah. be out of minions. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so he might just stop bringing things back. But at that back. point, he's just a 3-5 coming back. To, like, I don't know. Even then, it's it's okay. It's, it's just something. And if anything <laughs> is left in your deck that costs less than four, you're good. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, no, this is not... 
not supremely supremely exciting and i think the game i mean there's still some fast attacks out there that exist right now it's not like this expansion's coming out and the the, the fast decks even mid-range decks i think are potentially too fast for grizzled guardian but if yeah. any if any class is going to make it work it's going to be drew with their mana ramp uh but sure. right yeah, eight mana just... isn't turn eight <laughs> right the, the problem though is like you're if you're playing like a big druid type of thing you don't want to be running a bunch of four or less cost minions right right like, mm -hmm. You just want to be ramping past all that. So now all of a sudden you're forced to have some of them. It just everything kind of feels like it's not quite doing what you want it to be doing with yeah. this card. Yeah. All right. Well, let's move right along to Hunter, which I believe, again, only one new card since we last got together. But it's one I'm rather interested in. It's called Seeping Oozling. It's going to cost you six mana, and it's a 5 4 rare Hunter minion with a battle cry that reads Gain the death rattle of a random minion in your deck. It's kind of like being able to play four Savannah High Minions. Yep. Mm -hmm. Or that feels all right. Like, kindly Grandmother, too. Like, that's not a bad death rattle to hit. Like, five, four, the pops out of three, two. <laughs> sure. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you, you, you probably have to specialize your deck just a little bit and pull out some of the minions that don't have the most powerful battle cries because you're paying, you know, you're, you're paying probably, I guess you'd say, two mana for this, right? Because a four mana, five, four is like a vanilla cost that would be okay. So you want a, a death rattle that's worth two mana, at least. And if you can get it to be worth more than two mana, oh my god, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. So you're, you know, you're doing good. I I feel like the problem here is if you're playing this in Savannah High means you're jamming a lot of six drops in a deck. So True. if this was like a five cost, four, three that did the same type of thing, that might be a slightly better card because that's a that's always been a spot for Hunter that's been a little bit of a problem. So that five slot, people are playing, you know, weird stuff like, like Stranglethorn Tigers and Kodos and stuff just to try to fill out that spot. Yeah. Um, but six is kind of already jam packed, so we'll yeah. see. We'll see if this actually does see play, but it's got potential. There's one card. <laughs> well, but it's, I mean, Savannah I mean, jam packs it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> six is a lot to pay for. Like you don't want that many six drops in your deck. So. Yeah. No, and you're you're totally right. It just it's so funny because I mean we've had high mains for literally ever, and it's just yeah. it shapes the hunter class so much. Like I. Hall of Fame worthy, maybe just to just to open up some design space because the, cards sure. like this are super interesting. But it's like, uh, how do you cut high mains? And you, especially with this specific card, you can't cut the high mains because that's the death yeah. rattle you that's want. That's the death rattle you so, want, right? Yeah. yeah, like it just, I don't know. It's it's kind of unfortunate. I mean, I don't want to lose high mains in standard because they're one of Hunter's most powerful cards, and we don't need to neuter Hunter any further. But it feels sometimes <laughs> that cool stuff comes out, and we're just like, oh, but I can't play it because high main. <laughs> I get it, Neuter. Well, and in the wild, <laughs> I look at this card and I think, oh, awesome. And then you go, oh, but Sylvanas is the card that I want to get that death rattle. So mm. there's another six cost card. And yep. at when when does it stop? Right. So mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't. Again, two in hunters wild. kind of want to be curving out. So yeah, yeah. if it was, I, yeah, if it was a five mana four three, holy crap, would this card mm -hmm. be? I think super perfect but yeah i uh, will yeah we'll see we'll see i mean it depends on how hunter ends up kind of shaping out as a deck like are they allowed to play this many six cost cards because are they a slower deck then maybe well time will tell this is where i just nod and go yeah balanced balanced again another balanced card damn it <laughs> we need broken in hunter that's what it's looking like stop giving us balance <laughs> <laughs> i mean look if you're playing if you're playing like Katharina Winter Wisp and Crushing Walls and stuff like that. If that's the type of deck that ends up becoming a thing, then absolutely the seeping oozling is a big part of that plan. So it's it's really again, it's like how slow does the meta get? And what yeah. can Hunter do within that meta? I'm making some slow, dumb stuff in wild with Hunter. Um, there's a <laughs> there's an Azoth Hunter deck I'm trying in wild as soon as uh as soon as this Well this also I mean live. think about you know, Death Stalker Rexar is now a card we have that can just kind of give us a win condition um that doesn't include the rest of our deck so we can just build a deck full of like no minions and just a bunch of removal i was actually playing the other day i was playing because i just wanted to meme a little bit i was doing the barns with only yashiraj and death stalker rexar and stuff and i actually won i think i won like 90 percent of my games with that with that deck because nobody saw it coming first of all but it was like you know okay this actually does work just because once you actually get death stalker rexar out you're fine so maybe you can just play some of these really slow stuff and then 
just get there and you have multiple different wind conditions. I don't know. There's, I see something. Something's <laughs> brewing. I, I like just to think one so. of the rest of these hunter cards. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I like to I like to think so. Yeah, we've got six more still to reveal for Hunter, so so time will tell. Let's move on to Mage, where we have quite a few Mage cards to, to discuss. Starting with a new secret called Explosive Runes. This is a three mana rare Mage secret that reads: After your opponent plays a minion, deal six damage to it, and any excess to their hero. If you follow me on Twitter, you saw me getting excited about Trample finally making its way into Hearthstone, and I'll just I, I was expecting Dills to to cut in at this point. So trample is the effect where like you do damage to something and the rest of it keeps going, right? In yeah, magic. whatever the rest the, will go to the face. Yeah, yeah. whatever right. health is done to a creature in magic, like whatever overkill is done to the health of a creature, the the excess damage goes to the face. Yep. Or to the that's, that's essentially. I mean, they just didn't put it as a keyword, but it's exactly how this works, right? <laughs> um, it seems like a good card. I mean, dealing six damage and then splitting that up as you know, splitting it up so that it actually does the full amount to kill a minion, and then you don't actually waste any of the extra damage for three mana. That's pretty good because you, you know, you feel like you sometimes you fireball minions with like three health, right? Because they're just really dangerous minions. Um, right. Well, here you can actually, you know, do that fireball and then get the full value of the spell. The problem is, of course, it's a secret, and good players will be able to uh, essentially play around it by doing things in a certain order. Well, but and then can, I also you heard you can play around it. That's true, but the thing is, it still does something. It's not like snipe that if you're playing against a hunter, you play a one-one, and then that gets sniped, and the rest of the three damage goes yeah, sure. nowhere. It's like the, the your there excess is a, damage there is, a way is still to play going it. to go somewhere. <laughs> if you play a Tyrion, as I found out through oh uh, yes, yeah, it'll literally just take off the shield, and no extra damage will go anywhere. Even right. though one damage takes the shield off. No, it will use all six damage because apparently the rule is that it's going to use the health of the minion and then it will absorb that much damage. Yeah. And then whatever excess on there will go if the minion has uh, has a divine shield. So, so your if counter it was is a one health minion with a divine shield, somehow its divine shield is worth less than a Tyrion's divine shield. And I think that's yeah. pretty dumb. I, I wish it didn't work that way. Yeah, I, I, I wish strongly it just take one damage to do the shield and then Yeah. I strongly disagree with the way they did that too. It should yeah. e it should either it should either d d always absorb one damage or all abs always absorb all of the damage. Yes. Yeah, no, yeah. that'd be fine yeah. too. If they said, "Hey, it just you know, it's as if you fireballed it." Yeah. A shield, right? Like, yeah. That's okay too. But I would prefer if it was like you know, like trample in a lot of cases. If you had like say trample on a card, th this is actually there is a card in Eternal, or there's a there's a keyword called deadly, right? And if you have deadly. Uh, and this obviously is, is different because in the way magic works, like the attacker decides how to distribute the minions damage and the defender decides which minions actually have combat. Right. So, I mean, obviously this, it's different, but basically, like, let's say you had a minion that had five attack and it had deadly. I could then kill five minions by uh, attributing one damage to each minion. Right. The one damage is enough because it's just deadly means it's like poisonous. Right. Deadly means it just dies, takes one damage. Feels to me like something like uh, Trample or they call it Overwhelm in Eternal should work in a similar way here. So, I mean, I get it that combat works differently, but still, it just kind of bothers me. Yeah, it, it seems to me it's just like, well, this is how the coding kind of just works. So we're running with it versus what do we think this rule should actually be? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how it feels to me, too. Like, th this is just the easiest way to just make the card function yeah uh, without changing a whole bunch now, of back end stuff so. yeah now, now, now beyond that um i i think we're, we're taking away from from the coolness of explosive runes because i'm 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 in your boat joss i think like other than a divine shield minion that has six health there is the decision you have to make when you're playing mm -hmm. around this do i want to play around it and sacrifice my health or do i want to play around it and sacrifice a minion because yeah. one way or the other explosive runes is going to land unless you're getting rid of secrets um, so and it's, it's going to land on your opponent's turn, too, right? So this is the kind of thing where you can deal damage to your opponent's face outside of their turn. So if they are another mage with the ice block up, then you could potentially sure, kill, them. Can kill them. Through ice you block can kill them it, through yeah. their ice block, yeah. yeah. Which is kind of interesting. Sounds kind of, kind of rad and, and makes mage mirror matches more volatile. Right. 
which I uh, I dig. I'm into it. So I I really I'm very excited about Explosive Runes per- yeah, personally. Yeah, like that doesn't make me feel like it's a bad card. It's just like this is one of those like little nitpicky things. Like ah, I wish it worked differently than it does. But yeah, I still think the card is probably pretty good, and we'll probably see quite a bit of play. Hearthstone's <laughs> weird, man. I'm starting to just assume like oh this should work this way. It probably won't. <laughs> No. Uh, next is Lesser Ruby Spellstone. So this is a two mana rare mage spell that reads add one random mage spell to your hand. But of course there's a way to upgrade it. And in this case it's play two elementals. So let's go ahead and take a look at its upgrades. Uh, it's uh, It upgrades the first time to a Ruby Spellstone that adds two random mage spells to your hand. And finally to a greater Ruby Spellstone if you play two more elementals and you get three random mage spells to your hand. I saw this and I was like, yay, more random spells for mages. But at least at least the upgrade is playing elementals and not playing spells. Because yeah. in it like my hellscape of Hearthstone would be this card uses spells <laughs> to upgrade. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> give your give you a random spell and then you play a random spell to upgrade it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That'd be so awful. That would be yeah, that'd just be oof. Yeah. But any... so like it's gonna be slow to get this to where you want it to be. I mean the best thing is obviously like fireflies, because you get you know, yeah. two cheap elements two elementals, that you can play yeah. really quickly. Um, and obviously Firefly is just in an elemental mage deck. We haven't really seen like a true just elemental mage deck be a top tier deck. Obviously, we've seen when you get Frostlich Jane out, you know, the, the water elementals, you get them for free and those are super powerful. Um, but we haven't seen somebody just load their deck up with elementals. If you really want to play this card, you're going to have to do that. So... Well, and I wonder if this actually helps Elemental Mage in that way because you don't have to run as many spells now because you're going to you can basically generate all your spells. You're generate things. Some. Yeah, like you could probably go Babbling Book, Lesser Ruby Spellstone, Cabalist Tome, and then the rest of your deck can just be Elementals because you'll have enough spell juice from those cards that you don't need anything else you know, built into your deck, except for maybe like Frostbolts, Fireballs. Cause... I think they'd probably still run the Frostbolts yeah. and Fireballs, yeah. <laughs> but... and depending on how slow this meta is, Polymorph, like I've been seeing a lot of control mages, and I don't know, I still feel like they probably want to be running uh, oh, with the deal 15 too, right? and so... the Meteor. They'll probably want that still, you know. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, you'll, you will you can have a pretty significant minion base of decent elementals, uh, yeah. and then... Yeah, generate some extra spells too. Yeah. Obviously, two mana for three random mage spells is insanely good. So, well, so yeah, a three mana discount on your Cabalist Dome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but also going to be happening way later in the game because you're going to have to yes. play four elementals while having this in your hand to even yep. get right. there. So, but later on in the game, you'll be able to you know weave this in and maybe some of the spells you generate and some minions. Like it's like Cabalist Tome is always really hard to actually find a turn to just cast right because the turn you cast it you. Spend half your mana at least, uh, trying to you know generate those spells, and then sometimes you're just way behind on board because of it, right? So, being only this only costing two at some later stage in the game is a lot of late game power, right? Because it well, gives I mean, you eight mana you, to work with afterwards. Yeah, even if you cast it for you know just two spells, there's nothing saying you have to get all three spells. Like sure. even yeah. just two spells for two mana. I mean, especially when we're That's talking really late good. game, is good. Yeah, so. Yeah, I like this card. I do too, which is weird to say because it's going to create more ice blocks well, and more more angry for me. It's a really <laughs> good card, but I don't know if I like. Well, it. yeah, I, I, okay, maybe I, I I said that a little bit too quickly. What I like is that I think it's going to help Elemental Mage, which I think is a cool and interesting deck, and I like Elemental Mage. I want to see that played more often. If this like breaks Quest Mage and makes it like. So Super duper powerful. I'm just gonna be table flipping. <laughs> we'll put it that way. Yeah, yeah. I, see, I, I don't like think elementals. you'll play this in quest mage because don't you don't so because run enough yeah. elementals. Yeah, you only run stuff to control the board and draw and generate random spells. So I don't think you can ever afford to play this in that. Yeah, so that's so, fine. So then, that's yeah, I think it's okay. I think it's yeah. good. I yeah. Um, I think it's a good card, a powerful card. If I see more en- elemental mage, I will be happy, yeah. and I will. Like and actually, this card. <laughs> uh, Peter Whalen was talking about this that they're willing to give cards that push a certain archetype that maybe doesn't already exist yet or isn't very powerful. They're willing to make those really powerful individual cards because you do have to kind of build around them. But mm-hmm. they don't want to give existing already powerful stuff new new tools that are super extra powerful. Although 
that hasn't always been like you know giving druid ultimate <laughs> we'll station. we can all talk about that yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh you know the card like this does seem to be pushing a new archetype that isn't a thing yeah. yet and so yeah you could give them a very powerful uh card it's fine yeah. Well, let's uh, let's move on to the next mage card, the Raven Familiar. This is going to be a two mana, two two, common mage beast with a battle cry that reads: "Reveal a spell in each deck. If yours costs more, draw it." Spell Joust. Joust is back, guys, in one card so far. I don't so, understand why they didn't give it the keyword. The keyword's in the game. Well, because the keyword is minion based, so they had to write it out. Unless they literally wrote joust with spells, but I, you know, it, the keyword's not in the game, though, is it? It no. always says reveal. No, it's not. Inspire was the keyword. Joust was a common oh, yeah, theme right, that did right, not right. get yeah, a yeah. keyword. Joust always said like reveal two cards or whatever. Um, yeah, I mean it's just yeah, it's joust for spell. This is actually really good for like a burn mage, right? Because you can be running like pyroblasts and firelands portals and stuff, and reliably find them. So. You, you have to take out, you know, Frostbolts and stuff. But, <laughs> but they don't really even care about Frostbolt anymore. Also, um, like, if you were to, like, have this in your hand and then play... Uh, like, you'd have to already have drawn this, but then you could play... Um, card that d destroys everything that costs less. Uh, you know what I'm talking oh, about. The new Hemet? Hemet, yes, the new Hemet. Hemet yeah. 2, if electric... If you already have Hemet. this, then you kind of guarantee you get that burn. And that was actually a plan for some of those decks for a while was they would just run a bunch of the late game burn and then at some point they would hem it away the rest of their deck to make sure they yeah. always just drew it turn after turn yeah yeah i uh I, I i always wanted to see joust come back i was hoping that they would make it that if it was a tie you would still draw it not that in this particular case i want that mages have no problems it seems getting spells <laughs> in general but uh yeah i just i find it interesting and there's a discussion to be had here about why don't they just make a keyword but we have too many cards to talk about so i will pause yep. that discussion for another day and just say, good card. Let's talk about Arcane Artificer, our next mage card, which is a one mana, one two common mage elemental that reads, whenever you cast a spell, gain armor equal to its cost. Hmm. Yeah, I feel like this is probably bad, but it is a cheap elemental. So. Yeah, and I feel like it's the kind of thing that you definitely don't play on turn one. This is something that you hold in your hand, and when you know you're going to have a turn with a lot of spells, then that's when you cast this, right? So you put this down on the board. There we go. Sorry, <laughs> words hard. <laughs> and then, you know, you've got, say, somewhere between, like, five and nine mana left over, and then you just go spell, spell, spells, and heal yourself for a whole lot. Seems like it could be good. As long as they Maybe. change the... Uh, yeah, it's just... It you're has doing to something be... when you're doing something you would already be doing anyways, right? Yeah, that's. I mean, that's true, but you're also putting one mana one twos into your deck, so... But one mana one two elementals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If this wasn't an elemental, I don't think I would be making this argument at all. But I feel like yeah. maybe there's room for this in the uh, elemental mage. And we still have five. I just five... feel like mage already has ice block and stuff like that. So they don't really care about just gaining health in the same way. Ooh, ooh, you just made me excited. Uh, I'm, I'm now reading this as ice blocks going into Hall of Fame confirmed. Mm, okay. <laughs> yeah, sure. If you don't have ice block, yeah. you suddenly have to find other ways to survive. That is definitely true. Mm. So... Uh, this could be, you know, another form of healing. Again, though, it's like, yeah, it's like I, a firefly is good because it generates another one, too, right? Um, generating, depending on how much armor you're generating, we'll see. But it definitely does make, you know, like a fireball suddenly is like deal six, heal for four. Obviously, that card just got, you know, yeah. even better. So, yeah, it, may, yeah, it makes all your spells better this could because, be a thing. yeah, of the heal potential. Yeah. But, 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 and the fact that it's not healing, it's armor, which means you can go over 30, right? So. And then you can also still gain life, like you would gain that armor, and then let's say you're at like 15 or whatever, you're still able to gain life. You can life still heal, the yeah. Chain effect yeah. And, yeah. You could double dip. But yeah. um, so Tom in the chat just says he likens it to like earthen scales, but earthen scales, like having that buff on a minion allows you to do things like trade up and things like mm -hmm. that. This is always just going to be a one two on its own. So it's like a card that has to be paired with other cards and. We'll see. Uh, this is like a, a time will tell type of card for sure. Yeah, yeah. As of right now, not supremely exciting, but listen to the conversation we just had. There's definitely potential here, and some of that might be locked away The other five behind the other five mage cards we haven't seen yet. There might be some new neutral elementals we haven't seen yet. We don't know. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, it will help you get your uh, lesser ruby spell stones uh, yeah. upgraded. So cheap elemental. Done and done. It'll have life steal itself later on in the game after you play your death knight. Yeah, one one attack That's life steal. Well, one Sign life steal. me up. <laughs> Yeah, like, I mean, like, I still, guys. Every Come little on. bit counts. Right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's talk. Let's move into Paladin and talk about their uh, their legendary minion because she has been unveiled, Lanessa Sunsorrow, which is going to be a seven mana. Bear with me now. One one legendary minion that has a battle cry that reads: Cast each spell you cast on your minions this game on this one. I'm really excited about this card. Yeah, this could be super awesome. Uh, currently, there's not like a lot of cards in the seven slot, right? There's um, there's like some log jam around six and eight for Paladin, mm-hmm. but not really on seven. So, and if you've bone cast bone mare, really? Yeah, well, bone mare, sure. Nay. Um, but if you've cast, you know, just one uh, Kodo and one Blessing of Kings in the game, right? Then that's a pretty good seven drop. <laughs> <laughs> well, even if all you've done is Spike Ridge Seed on six, then you play this on seven, and then you've got, like, cause a lot of times you'd be trying to, like, token Spike Ridge Seed on eight or something if they've kept clearing your board. So yeah. if you've Spike Ridge Seeded on six and this on seven, like, it's it's going to be disgusting for your opponent to try. I think to you only play Kings and Spike Ridge Seed. Yeah, though, that's all deck. you really have to do. I don't do, think you yeah. play any of the other stuff, and then you just hope that you've cast. Yeah, at least one Spike Ridge Steed and maybe a Spike Ridge Steed and a, like, and a Kings by the time yeah, you play Yeah, if this. you've done yeah. a Kings too, that's a huge bonus. But I feel like this is fine if you've just managed to get a Steed out before you play her. Yeah. I mean, and the Steed is like, yeah, a Steed, a seven mana, what would it be, a three, seven? Three, seven, a three, that, seven that, that drops that, two, that, six. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. That poops out that would be, That'd be a fine card. Like, it wouldn't be great, but it would be totally fine. Um, but if any other buffs happened over the course of the game, like if you're running yeah. Kings or something, that's nuts. Yeah, then you've got an insane card that you're pulling out for seven mana. So, yeah, absolutely. I think this card is definitely going to be something that p- people are at least going to toy with. I don't think you build, I don't even think you have to build your whole deck around it, which is the beauty of it, right? Yeah. Just putting in two so, cards that are already pretty good makes yeah. this card pretty good. I do have one question, though, and I'm not sure if I've seen it clarified anywhere. If I play something like Smuggler's Run that's like buff my minions in my hand, it's a spell on my minions. Would that count, or does it have to be like a targeted spell like Blessing of Kings? I would assume targeted. I don't think that would count because I think that counts as casting it onto your hand. Oh, okay. You know, yeah, I, I, I'm I, not going to say for sure one way or the other. Yeah, I just didn't know if you guys had seen a uh, clarification about something like that. I hadn't, I hadn't either, but given the history of Hearthstone, I would assume targeted spell required so yeah we'll see we will certainly see uh but i'm but I'm, see I, yeah then i got i gotta wonder like level up this isn't a <laughs> silver hand recruit but you know like i would assume not I, i'm with you garrett i think you always have to be targeting stuff right yeah yeah and and again level up is not is not targeted it will it will happen to all yeah. your no, silver but it's recruits. actually but you are but it's a spell you cast on your minion. minion yeah <laughs> right right but that makes me yeah. think like any board buffs probably won't work either because they're technically not targeted but if if we're talking in this uh hypothetical that that jocelyn was trying to get an- answered um I, I think it would hold that that would hold true for any any non minion specific spells mm-hmm. yeah i agree but yeah, and and yes, this card would absolutely suck to get dirty ratted out chat room. And uh, oh, also, yeah. this is a scary card to run if you're running recruit in your paladin deck. Sometimes you're gonna evolve a six drop into it, and it's gonna suck. Oh man, oof, oof. <laughs> uh, anyways, let's uh, move on. Talk about the next paladin card, Call to Arms, a four mana epic paladin spell that reads recruit three minions that cost two or less so okay nothing scary here for linessa because she she costs she costs more than two <laughs> <laughs> so so four mana it, flooding the board i think it's pretty good you just have dudes. to be running a specific style of deck probably that's i guess the problem here is if you're running a deck that let that wants to play stuff like this that just puts three minions onto the board you probably are running a bunch of one drops and stuff too. Yeah. So you might get screwed a little bit by getting, you know, some of your one drops. And if you're running a deck that specifically runs, you know, only two drops that have value and no battle cries, is that the type of deck that wants to just be slamming three minions onto the board? I don't know. So 
obviously like its effect is pretty good if you just look at it in a vacuum but then you also have to you have to take into account like what type of deck is this really going into so we'll see i it's, it's like you look at it and initially think oh my god that's really good right mm-hmm. i pay four mana for six mana worth of stuff um but then you start thinking about like what the actual full deck looks like and it mm-hmm. might not support what this card actually does in the same way like you, there'll be cards you want to put in there that you can't right yeah i mean it's it, it, at four mana it's it's worth it like you said in raw mana cost it's also early enough that you know you have a good chance of having you know th- three minions that cost that that little still in your deck yeah and i've heard a lot of people talk about dirty rat like dirty rat would be a super sweet card to be recruiting because mm. you don't get the mm. the bad battle, Negative cry. But battle oftentimes, cry, yeah. in these control decks the reason you run dirty rat is not is because you take advantage of the battle cry right so, yeah it's not because you need the two six it's because yeah. you need to pull something a combo piece or something out of the opponent's yeah deck, and then yeah. you or hand. consecrate it away yeah. or whatever you know stuff like that so yeah i don't know um it's like initially you just look at the card and you don't think about anything but what the card actually says you go, oh my god, that's cool. That's a good card. But then, the more I kind of thought about it, the more I was like, not so sure. Murloc Paladin, I know a lot of people are talking about too, but sometimes you'll get, uh, you know, your Rockpool Hunters and, and cards that you actually want the Battle Cries for. And yeah. that actually won't be that great. And sometimes you'll pull a bunch of stuff out of your deck and then it'll get AoE'd away and it just wasn't really that effective of a turn. I don't know. It's, it's an interesting card and I have to wait and see before yeah. I really can say it's good and, I, and i've seen i've seen millhouse thrown around in reference to this card as well and that's that's cute but oh god help you any of the games where you end up with millhouse in your hand you're gonna just draw it yeah a bunch of the yeah. time so that's just <laughs> oh that, that makes my i am getting a stomach ache just thinking about that <laughs> <laughs> hurts There's to think about uh let's talk about unidentified maul which is a new paladin weapon it's a three mana Two attack, two durability, rare pally weapon. And it reads gain a bonus effect in your hand. So more of these bonus effect cards. Let's see what the bonus effect possibilities are. So no matter what it turns into, it's going to be a three mana, two, two weapon. Your options of what it transforms into are a uh, battle cry that gives your minions divine shield, a battle cry that gives your minions taunt, a battle cry that summons two one one silver hand recruits, or a battle cry that gives your minions plus one attack. So all all of the possibilities are board wide minion buffing for your own dudes. Yeah, or grabbing right. a couple or, more or dudes. Getting so a it just feels dudes. like this wants to be in a dude deck, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and I think you know, the dude deck may be okay in standard. If you're playing the dude deck in wild, where we know the dude deck is actually pretty good, I don't think you choose this over muster for battle, and I don't think you play both no. of them. No. Well, so. and see, so the problem with this one is because it's unidentified and it changes every game, there's some outcomes that are really good, like Divine Shield, really good. If you're playing the dude yeah. deck, the 1-1 one, one Silverhand Recruits are really good. Give Your Minions Taunt is garbage. Yeah, it's terrible. <laughs> it's yeah. so bad. And, and Give Your you Minions Plus two, One two. Yeah, and then yeah. Give Your Minions Plus One Attack is really board dependent, right? Like, sure. you know, like how many minions you have is going to make this better. So you've got kind of like... One totally terrible option, two options that are kind of okay, and one option that's pretty good. I don't yeah. think I play those kind of odds in my deck. <laughs> yeah, probably not. I mean, it also depends on if there's nothing better in the three slot for that type of deck in standard. Yeah. And so that's it's really going to kind of depend on where, where, first of all, that deck lands as far as, like, is it a decent meta deck? And then what cards do you actually have to put in there? Is this one of the better options in three? Yeah. That may Which very well be. You can't I really don't play it, it on though. three, though, because how yeah. good is the effect going to ever be on turn three, right? Yeah. Unless you've somehow gotten your, you know, a couple of one ones to stick or whatever. Well, if you drew uh, it, I mean, at any point you're gonna you're gonna know what it is before you play it. So it's on turn yeah. three, it won't be a surprise. You're not gonna oh, yes. yeah, play yeah, yeah. unidentified mall and be like, oh no, I got any of these other than the two one one silver hand recruits. This sucks. Uh, like it won't be a surprise. So there will be times where you can play it on three because you know what you're getting. Uh, yeah. But yeah, you, you can't discover this effect. You have no choice over it. It's completely random what effect you get. Uh, so so outside of arena, uh, I'm I'm not rushing to include the unidentified mall in my yeah. deck. Because no, yeah, this card's gonna the, suck uh... later in the game when you mm-hmm. when you actually might be able to take advantage of the, of the battle cry. Because and it's the... gonna be a two two F. It's not gonna kill anything, right? So. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing. The three mana three two that gives your divine shield minions plus one plus one. 
that's the weapon that paladins play right now, as, sure. as they should. That's the powerful one with the three attack that helps you actually control the board. Two attack, I don't think, is enough. Um, if this was a, you know, three, two weapon that got a bonus effect, then sure, then it's playable and you might actually consider playing it over the Divine Shield buff. But right now, like you're playing that three mana, three, two weapon, even if you're not buffing any minions, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, because so three attack I, actually like, kills stuff. Yeah. Un unidentified Maul doesn't replace that weapon for me. I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head, but... Yeah, but then they'd have to put Fiery War Axe back to two mana, and do we want to live in that world? <laughs> no, no, I'm very, very happy with the world I live in right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, so not, a, not a thrilling weapon. Let's talk. Let's move on to talk about Lesser Pearl Spellstone for Pally. So it's going to be a two mana rare Paladin spell that reads Summon a 2-2 Spirit with Taunt. As with all of the spell stones, there's a way to upgrade this sucker. In the case of Paladin, you need to restore three health to upgrade it. And uh, it, just like all the others, it has two types of upgrades. When you upgrade it once, it summons a 4-4 four, four Spirit with Taunt. When you upgrade it a second time, it summons a 6-6 six, six Spirit with Taunt and can no longer be upgraded. So if you upgrade it, if you restore six health to yourself while you're holding the spell stone in your hand, you can pay two mana for a 6-6 six, six with Taunt, and that's kind of nasty. Yep. Yeah, two mana six sixes with taunt. That's good. Um, a two mana four four with taunt is really good. So upgrade it once, and mm -hmm. you're in business, right? Yeah. Doesn't yeah, seem the too spell hard. Stones, it seems like the spell stones that we saw this week, um, the pearl and the ruby, seem to be playable, like definitely playable at two. You don't like necessarily have to get that third iteration of the spell. Um, so it's, it's kind of interesting because I feel like the first couple of spell stones we saw, we were like, okay, so you have to upgrade this both times. Like you can't just straight up play it out, but these ones seem a lot more playable. Yeah. Yeah. And like, you know, even at, even at the first iteration, there is a card that literally is two mana, two, two with taunt, right? It's yeah. A thing. <laughs> every new player put it in their deck when they first started thinking, oh man, hell yeah, taunt. They'll never hit my face. Um, so, I mean, even there, it's like, it's not the worst card ever. Sometimes you just need a minion, right? Yeah. And, uh, but yeah, it's not going to be that difficult to get, especially with the next card, which we, I think we haven't talked about yet. Right. But we haven't talked about it yet. Like no. clearly there's going to be cool ways to, I mean, this, this card, the next card is just going to make it so that it'll just keep upgrading your hand as long as this card exists on the board. So yep. healing as a paladin is not very difficult. No, right. no, no, it's not. And, and there's still cards to be revealed. Who knows? It could get, it could be even more realistic for pallies but let's talk about the next card it's benevolent gin and it's going to cost three mana it's a two four common paladin elemental and at the start of your turn you get to restore three health to your hero benevolent gin meet lesser pearl spellstone you two are gonna be <laughs> best friends yep and i mean this there's you know illuminator was a card that was a three mana two four that gave you a bunch of healing uh, when you had secrets up, this just doesn't even ask you to do anything, right? Just b play just me. Just end your turn. <laughs> yeah, put me on the board. I got you. So, I mean, if you heal for three, a three minute two forward, not terrible. If you heal for six, all of a sudden, like, that's a ton of value. If you heal for nine, somehow it lasts three turns. So, yeah, you're going to be able to, it's, it's going to allow you to, like, utilize some of these weapons, like Rallying Blade, which is the weapon we were talking about before, like Thank Vine you. Cleavers, <laughs> um, things like that. So you're going to, you know, and now you're not going to have to worry about the healing. And then, of course, buffing your Lesser Pearl Spellstone seems pretty solid. So Control Paladin's probably going to want this. Uh, maybe even just, like, mid-range Paladin just to try to, like, live until you play these really powerful Lanessa Sun Sorrow turns and things like that. So seems really good. Mm -hmm. Yep. Cool. That means we can wrap up Paladin because I think we agree that that's just a good card. Uh, Temporis is next. This is the Priest Legendary Minion. It's a 7-mana, 6-6 six, six Legendary Priest Dragon with a battle cry that reads, Your opponent takes two turns, then you take two turns. WTF. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sold on this card at all. Um, because, yeah, it's just such a risk to give your opponent two turns before you get your two turns. Yeah. And I saw them, you know, trying to kind of justify this card as, well, you give them two turns, and then you flip the game back with your two turns. I'm like, well, maybe. Or you're just dead. <laughs> or you're dead. Yeah. <laughs> so, I don't know, man. I don't know about this one. It's kind of interesting. I really want to see what happens when you play this with a brand bronze beard on the board. Do you get two oh turns? Yeah. Do they get two, then you do get two, and then they get two again, and then you get two? Or 
Do they get four and then you get? I don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> no idea how this is gonna work with Brands Barnes, yeah, but the, I want to find out. The battle cry would trigger twice, so yeah. I would have guessed that it just does the same thing both times, so it's just two turns and two turns. If I'm exactly. really, yeah. Yeah. my like, real okay, honest guess is that gets two do. turns, and then yeah. the battle cry goes off again, and it's like your opponent gets two turns. Overrides yeah, itself. like it's not going to suddenly like it add to four. the previous one. Yeah, I don't That's think That's my it, actual yeah. guess, but I'm kind of hoping that it goes two, 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 two. And four, cool, and but... four. <laughs> you know what I'm wondering? Who's okay. going to actually play this card? Mm. Yeah. Because, I mean, yeah, Nosdormu's, Nosdormu is funky and fun and memorable. And Temporis uh, is funky, fun, and I think is going to be memorable. And uh, points to Team 5 for the lore connection there. But, uh, no. And the art <laughs> yeah. is awesome. Like, I bet it's, this looks It's amazing. a meme card, right? And it's fine that yeah. they gave Priest a meme card because they also get Dragon Soul, which is, like, just a good card. So, I'm okay with them not getting a ton of awesome, like. Oh yeah, no, so. Tempora should be worse in my opinion. Yeah. Just... yeah. <laughs> After seeing Dustbreaker, I'm just like, Priest's legendary minion should just not have text. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, great. at least they came with something kind of cool, and maybe at some future date, it has actual real implications, like you can do stuff with it. But yeah, for right now, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to combo this with those Dormu morning pants in the chat room. That'd be great. <laughs> Here you go. 15 seconds followed by 15 seconds. Go, go, First go. you have to get your nose Dormu on the board. Have yeah, it live a turn. Then stink. play this. Yeah. yeah. Man, I think we had it's a running gag time. a long time ago about how one of us uh, always played nose Dormu against our, like, grandparents. So, you know, they couldn't play fast enough. And now it's just going to be worse. We're going to be even meaner to our grandparents. Yeah. Uh, next up for Priest is Psychic Scream. It's a seven mana epic priest spell that shuffles all minions into your opponent's deck. Yeah. Oh, this card is awesome. It's ridiculous. The removal Stop game is priests real. Stop damn good. They're already fine. <laughs> yeah. Like, you're just never going to run out of AoE ever, you know? Uh, Razakis Priest is always going to be able to clear your board. And the, like the cool thing about this card too is you clearly yeah sure you might give a couple of your minions to the other guy, that's fine. They still have to like pay for those minions again. You're, well, you're not even you don't even care about minions in that deck anyway. So, um, yep. Yeah, and I, mean, I don't know. I just don't see a real downside in just being able to clear the board without death rattles going off, right? Exactly. And it, not only death rattles going off, but specifically the warlock right now, like they want their demons to die because they're playing Gul'dan. So if you're denying things like, you know, the, the, basically the warlocks, all of their stuff is going to go back in their deck again. Then they have to find those demons and they have to play those demons. Then they have to die. Like you're making their death knight pretty much worthless because you didn't just like twisting nether and kill them. You picked yeah. them up off the board and got rid of them. It's yeah. insane. <laughs> yeah, and you bloated their deck out again. Like exactly, They might be looking yeah. for specific cards, and now you've put a bunch of, like, let's yep. say they have a bunch of token creation. Now you've thrown all those tokens into the deck. Let's say yep. they play a living mana. You just picked up all the living mana. They never got the death rattle. It just went back. Now they got a bunch of one mana two twos. Disgusting. That, yeah, and they have no mana anymore. Um, yeah. So yeah, there's, like, lots of really, really great applications for this card. Uh, you know, I'm imagining, like, being able to, clear the board after doppelgangster evolve and all that kind yeah. of like there's just so many times we're just cleanly wiping a board to get all the time you need to mm. set up your uh your your hero power dk stuff it's gonna be really good yep i'm Thanks afraid of pri i'm more afraid of priest <laughs> i mean it's great for priest players yeah yeah i'm, I'm excited it does seem very priesty though i mean i, I don't know yeah. i'm okay like it's lore wise it seems okay you no, know, um, it absolutely does. I mean, more. Oh, by the way, on on Twitter, Dills, uh, you were challenged to come up with what is the opposite of milkshake because that's what's what's happening. Yeah, and I don't really know. Uh, the somebody said, "Hold my beer." The hold my beer deck. Um, uh, that might be good. I like that name. I would have called yeah. it a neutral bullet because anything anyone makes with a neutral bullet is the opposite of a milkshake because it's garbage. Okay. All right. All right. Fair enough. <laughs> this is garbage, though. <laughs> But, like, I think a lot of people saw this card and started thinking about all the, like, ways you could play crappy minions and then give them to your opponent. And I, that's not what this card really is You don't even for. have to do it's that. It's just to clear the board. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you don't have to do all that kind of crazy yeah. stuff. You can just clear the board and give them their minions back. That's totally fine. Yeah. It's like vanishing into the deck instead of into the hand, right? Yeah. Yep. That's better. It's nasty. 
Let's move on to Rogue. Sonya, Shadow Dancer. This is the Rogue Legendary Minion. Uh, it's a 3-mana 2-2 that reads, After a friendly minion dies, add a 1-1 one, one copy of it to your hand. It costs 1. I'm really excited about Sonya, Shadow hey. Dancer. The thing is, she has like the same sort of effect as the... I can't remember which one it was, the Mage Secret, but it's not a secret. So... Yeah, on, well, on demand, it's only three mana. You can play her when you know you're about to make some trades. Yeah, you just make a whole bunch of trades, get little 1-1 one, one copies of those, and then you're good mm -hmm. to activate all your combos going forward. I think she's great. Yeah, people were playing five mana for the Shadow Caster to do this mm -hmm. similar thing to only one minion, uh, and you're paying five mana for a 4-4. Four, four. On turn three, I think you can even get away with playing a lesser body more than you can on, say, a turn five. Yep. So, like, let's... Talk about like let's talk about Keliseth. Uh, <laughs> you could you know if Keliseth lives one turn, you play this, and then you bring Keliseth into something, and you get another Keliseth. So yay! Um, and it's a three mana <laughs> card, so it doesn't doesn't mess that deck up. Like that's just just for that interaction alone, I think the card is fine. And then obviously uh, elemental, and you know getting Bone Drakes back or uh, or Bone Bone Mares back, and getting um, all the stuff that you already kind of play in that rogue deck. Most of it is going to be good to get back in a one right. and a one one right cairns yeah really most good. of it has you know yeah. battle cries or death rattles you're not Cobalt playing scale banes are going to be yeah. real good like oh that basically that deck can Vile just, spines <laughs> yeah can just pop this guy in and get lots of value so yeah yeah, if I'm if I'm not running uh, Keliseth, it's make, it makes me want to play uh, self damaging board clears. Like I actually want to. Uh, it's making me think I want to try something with Wild Pyromancer in my rogue deck. Just give me more board clear options because if it kills my own stuff and I have Sonya in hand, who cares? Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, I'm, I'm I'm very excited about this one. Not to mention, uh, uh, this is one of my favorite pieces of art so far. That so uh, Sonya is wearing some sweet ass rogue gear. Mm. Looking nice. Uh, Faldorai Strider <laughs> is next. A four mana, four four epic rogue minion with a battle cry that reads: Shuffle three ambushes into your deck. When drawn, summon a four four spider. All right, I mean a four four a four mana four four isn't terrible on its own, right? And uh, then later on in the game, you just might get free four fours. So yeah, wow. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Play this in wild with brand too. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it, six of them in your deck. It seems uh, it seems solid. So I'm I haven't been able to find art out there. We must be getting a unique ambush, another unique ambush because there's an ambush card already in the game. Because yeah. of beneath the grounds, and it specifies right. Nerubians. Uh, now if, you, if you click on this, I think you can see the token. It's called oh, it is on Spider here. Ambush. I earlier, it wasn't in there. And it says summon a four four spider draw card, and then instead oh, okay. of it being a Nerubian, it's a Leyline Spider. Ah, uh, so it's actually Very so it cool. even has a different name. It's a Leyline yeah. Spider. It's a beast on top of that. Okay, I totally. I, I'm an idiot apparently because I tried to find this and I couldn't. It's uh, also a character or like a race from current WoW from, yeah, Legion, from Legion, which is cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. When they showed up in Legion, I got really excited because like, oh my God, are we seeing new Nerubians? And then they had their own lore and you found out they had nothing to do with Nerubians, but they were kind of similar. It's like spider, spider elves. Spider elves. <laughs> yeah. So um, I don't know if this card goes into uh, the current type of tempo rogue deck thing because obviously you don't want to be playing four mana four fours, but... If you're trying to just make like a, a rogue deck that just kind of takes it to late game, uh, or a rogue deck like like a miracle rogue, miracle I think would, this would yeah. be fine in. Um, you know, it's just like there's not a lot of stuff going on on four anyway, so it's just a card that kind of like here's I, I'm doing something because you don't have Tomb Pillager anymore, right? In standard, right. so uh, the four slot is a little tough. I've even been seeing people play the four cost prints because they just had nothing else to do on four. So now here's like a at least you put something on the board and then later on in the game when you're miracling, you're just playing free four fours at that point. So pretty Ugh, cool. disgusting. Pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. I kinda I, I kind of the more you dis you discuss Valdore Strider in a miracle deck, Dills, the more excited I get about this card. Uh, also, I, I feel like we should stress if for any of our listeners who maybe you only play standard and you miss TGT so you're not familiar with uh, Beneath the Grounds and how Ambush worked in that. Uh, the, the Spider Ambush card that you get off of this also draws you a card when it's pulled. So you get the 4-4, four, four, yeah. and then you still get whatever was behind it. Maybe it's another Ambush. Who knows? Mm -hmm. And then you draw another card, and you, you, you still get a normal card that you can play. 
So you're not you're not sacking uh, you're not sacking card draw for it. Sure, absolutely. Uh, yeah. Loramon in the chat room is asking what happens when you draw the ambush with ten cards in hand. So it would still cast because it doesn't go into your hand and then cast. It get, like gets cast when it's drawn, so it never enters your hand. So you'd still get your four you'd, four. You'd I think you'd burn the next card. Uh, yes, you burn the next card. Yeah, but um, you still overdraw. although the way ambush works in Mill Rogue is. If the card is discarded, it actually doesn't go off. So I don't know. It might actually not oh, go Oh, really? Off. Yeah. Because people talked about it for a long time, like, that obviously you should be playing beneath the grounds in Mill Rogue. And then people were like, well, no, actually, if you burn the card, it doesn't put the 4-4 into play. So oh. it turned out to not be a good Mill Rogue card. So I don't know. It, yeah. If it's That's burned, it would, yeah. It would technically not be drawn. It would just be discarded. Hmm. Okay. That is not how I thought that that would work. <laughs> yeah, but it's just one of those like a interaction that a lot of people didn't expect, mm -hmm. and they thought immediately when they saw that card that like, oh my god, Mill Rogue, and then they start playing it, and they were like, oh, never mind, <laughs> I'm not getting the four fours. So yeah. Okay, well then I would assume this would work the same way. You would not yeah. get the uh, well. Don't just don't have ten cards in your hand. What are you doing? <laughs> what are you well, doing? But playing against the Mill Rogue? Well, I guess yeah, you're drawing and and casting. So hopefully you don't have that many cards. Yeah, you tend to you tend to be cycling. Yeah. In that case, and not that it can't happen, but just be careful. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's uh, let's get out of rogue. Those are the only new rogue cards so far, and let's ins let's move on to shaman, where we got to see their legendary minion, Grumble, comma World Shaker. It's a six mana seven seven legendary shaman elemental, with a battle cry that reads, "Return your other minions to your hand." They cost one. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. This is good. <laughs> yep. It's pretty easy to get uh, a few minions to be on the board with an elemental shaman by turn six, um, and then to pull them back into your hand and replay them while you're also playing a seven-seven. Yeah, like suddenly, like the next few turns are just insane, right? Yeah. After you play this card, so this seems really, really positive for just the like I I have this elemental jade shaman that I've still kind of been trying to figure out the pure op like optimal build and this card definitely goes in that deck because there's so many good battle cries in the deck shaman's really fallen off a bit this uh last season or two as well like I, I, they were really popular with the whole evolved evolve thing for a while and then for whatever reason they've fallen out i think like maybe eight percent of my games versus like i'm facing like 20 percent priest 18 percent mage like but all of a sudden like no shamans so uh i think yeah. this, this this might be the thing Elemental Shaman needs to really be a thing now because this is insane. You can like have a whole bunch of bodies on board and you do a whole bunch of trading, control the board, all your stuff has one or two health, and then you go, shabam, 7-7, seven, seven, and I get to heal all this stuff, and now it also costs one, so my Elemental Train's yeah. not going anywhere. Like, it just, yeah. Why can't Hunter have cards like this? <laughs> they, they might. They might. There's still <laughs> still some Hunter cards to be seen. Um, I gotta say, like early on in Cobalt and Kettlecombs kind of uh, preview cycle, I was not that jazzed for this expansion outside of the dungeon run. Like I was really excited for that, and uh, the expansion seemed kind of like whatever. I'm getting very. I like that we are getting cards that are. We're kind of looking and just like, yeah, this is just good. This is just a good damn card the the rogue legendary today psychic stream for priest today we're all i think a little concerned about that dragon for priest that we talked about last week but um I don't that know. dragon might not even be that good considering like everything we're seeing is pretty late game focused right i mean <laughs> it's still good but i'm just saying like if aggro is not really that popular uh you know aoe for three isn't really going to be that great so yeah yeah like i'm seeing a lot of stuff look like some real late game stuff is, is about to start happening I, I hope so. It feels. Sorry, Garrett. Go right ahead. Uh, it feels a whole lot with this expansion like they haven't necessarily given the cards themselves much of a like theme, something to grab onto. It's like we had quests and then we had death knights and now we're almost like filling in a lot of the gaps in a lot of the classes, or at least that's what it feels like to me. Um, to give them a lot more choices and a lot more well-rounded decks and kind of like we just said with Elemental Shaman or we were talking about Elemental Mage earlier. It's like they needed a tool or two to make their deck and now, bam, here's the tools and now it's really capping off the standard year in that way. Like the um, identity of this expansion feels very centered on the dungeon run, the single-player content, 
And then all of the actual expansion cards are very much just, you know, filling in the gaps left by Angoro and by Frozen Throne. Yeah, I mean, it's at the end of the day, it's it's a Dungeons and Dragons theme. They're not going to say that for legal yes, reasons, yeah. but that's what it is. And so it's a a a general, just overall fantasy is, theme. Yeah. So th- that's this, why this... it seems so general and overall to me because I'm not super familiar with Dungeons and Dragons, so I'm not getting all of the D and D references. Although that's clearly what it is. Well, there's not um, even that but many. But yeah, from a from like a Hearthstone card mechanic standpoint. Yeah. That's what this expansion feels like to me. Well, well real quick, let, um, to keep pulling this thread, uh, let's talk about something you are familiar with, which is Warcraft. And and to me, because this is a, a kind of a, just a general fantasy theme, this this to me almost looks like if, if we had gotten a, a new basic set of cards like or, or a new just general Hearthstone theme, that it would kind of look like this because this is a general mm-hmm. kind of fantasy theme. But it, it's it's even it, it's significantly more in the identity of Hearthstone as it stands now than it did when it launched, where it was kind of you know standing on Warcraft shoulders. Right. Yeah. So it's 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 general. There's there's not one specific thing. We're not dealing with like you know weird gem evolutions in Angoro or quests, and we're not dealing with death knights, but we're dealing with monsters and kobolds and loot. I, I, I'm enjoying it a lot now that we're seeing a lot more of the set, which is why they should show more cards, especially when they announce that <laughs> something as big as BlizzCon. But, yep. Uh, let's move on. Talk about Windshear Stormcaller. This is a five mana five five epic shaman minion. It's a little, uh, it's a little cobalt praising the heavens. Look at him; he's so proud. In his well, it's little totem. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, Windshear Sto- Stormcaller has a battle cry that uh, reads: If you control all four basic totems, summon Alakir the Windlord. Oh, Windshear Stormcaller, I can't wait to try and make you work. Yep. <laughs> now, this card would look absolutely just awful to me if we didn't also get Primal Talismans and Kobold Hermit yep. at the same time. But yeah. they released all three of these cards at once. So yeah, it's let's, pretty important that you know that those other cards are let's coming. jump around and talk about them. This would never happen in the current state of Hearthstone, right? Yeah. Um. Now you could go to wild because there are still like there's yeah. the witch doctor and then the and then the buff all your wild totems totem and, shaman is gonna be yeah awesome. wild totem shaman is yeah. gonna be crazy um, it's gonna be insanity. That being so, said, there's some interesting combos that could happen with this guy where if you do have four totems and then you get wind shear storm color off, then you know that primal fusions are gonna buff for plus four plus four. So you could buff your Alec here to 11 attack immediately and immediately hit base for 22. You know, that kind of stuff can happen. Um, it's a lot of pieces. How though, reliable think, is it? Yeah, it's it's the way I like my combos when you have to have three or four pieces and then you do a crazy swingy turn. I mm-hmm. like that. I think that's good. But when you can kind of like do the, the reason I don't like Priest as much is because you can do those pieces throughout the game and it becomes easier and easier to execute. Where if yeah. you have to do it all in one turn, then you know really that's when it, it's, it gets a lot harder. So that's why I, I really, really like the way that um, I think these totem decks are going to be built, and I think they're going to be great and wild. And now that we know that Tuscar Totemic was nerfed to, or air, air quotes nerfed to only give basic totems, all of a sudden he's buffed again because you only want basic totems. Sure. <laughs> Yeah, uh, let's jump around. We'll come back to Unstable Evolution. Let's talk about yeah. Primal yeah, Talisman. Let's talk about Cobalt Hermit. Yeah, right. Make sense. Yeah, so Primal Talisman is a three mana rare shaman spell that gives your minions death rattle, summon a random basic totem. And then Cobalt Hermit is a two mana 1 1 common shaman minion with a battle cry that reads choose a basic totem, summon it. Yeah. So the four basic totems are going to come up and you're going to choose one, and that's what you're going to get. Uh, in, in addition to a one-one for your two mana, that seems pretty damn solid to me. Yep. Well, uh, it's nice because you can guarantee most of the time you're going to want something specific, like a taunt totem, a spell power totem. You're very rarely going to choose the one-one, but sometimes you're going to use this just to fill out wind shear storm collars requirement. Right? So, so here's where my um, brain goes, um, and and I'm going to hit myself with my own caveat at the end, so don't worry. <laughs> but I see Primal Talisman, I see Co- Cobalt Hermit, I see Windshear Stormcaller. I want to try and get Windshear Stormcaller's Battle Cry to work, so obviously I'm including Cobalt Hermit, obviously I'm including Primal Talisman. I look at Primal Talismans, and because it's give all your minions uh, death rattle summon a, ba- a random basic totem, I'm just like, well, 
I'm already playing Totem or uh, Token Shaman. That that's a deck that already exists, that already works, that has a ton of little dudes on board that constantly die. So why wouldn't I want to make uh, try put throw Primal Talismans in there? Uh, but my caveat is, where the hell do I find six empty slots in my Token Shaman to fit these, yeah. <laughs> these cards yeah, in? It's gonna be tough. I mean, the fact is, a five mana five five is not just awful, even if you don't get the thing to go off. So. Um, yeah, at least like a five mana five five is like okay, cool. If it doesn't happen, fine. It's a five mana five five. It's not a well, you does happen. Two... Oh my god, I got an alligator for free, right? Yeah, you can put two in your deck, right? He's not a legendary, yeah, sure. so you you get two shots at it. So you can yeah. play him just as a five mana five five if you want to, and you know try to to hit it later. So he can be used for a little bit of tempo if you have to. So I think he's fine. Also, as uh, going back to wild again, just a car. When you upgrade your shaman hero power, you get to choose your totem. So sure. it, there's yet another tool over there. So I think this this totem shaman build is going to be really good and really fun over in wild. So yeah. I'm actually excited to try that. And I and I like the fact that there's there's cards that are being introduced that are they almost feel like they were built for wild. Um, yes. Yeah. And sure, like the, there will be some kind of people will try to make this work in standard as well. It may not work that well. But the, I don't know. The tools kind of seem like they're there. If this is the only totem centric cards we got, though, I'm not 100% convinced this is going to be very reliable. But in standard specifically. In standard, yeah. Yeah. But still very fun and cool. Yeah. And yeah, you'll be running. It'll be. It won't quite be what your current token shaman is, but it will probably be running like bloodlust and things like that. Yeah. So, you know, and you'll have your things from below, and you'll probably still run a couple of evolvey type things, but maybe not that much. You can't mm -hmm. run the Death Knight, though, because you need to be able to still press that button, right? Yes, So if yeah. you stop being able to press the button, then, so. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, and Witch Doctor is a standard card at the moment, right? Mm -hmm. For a little bit? Yeah. Yeah. So, there you go. There's another tool. Yeah. Let's talk about our last uh, our last shaman card for today, Unstable Evolution. This is a one mana epic shaman spell that transforms a friendly minion into one that costs one more, repeatable this turn. So an evolve that happens to only one minion, and you get to keep trying it until you get a result you like, and you and also you just get to use up all the rest of your mana. So seems all right if you're playing uh, evolve shaman. You probably want this. This seems, I don't know, to me it sounds, seems really good, and I, I don't know if, like, maybe I'm just, I almost feel like I'm falling into a trap because we haven't really seen an effect like this before. No, so basically the way that it, it, it works, they, they kind of explain it. It just goes back into your hand over and over, and then once you hit end turn, after you've cast it, it'll just go away. So I'm, I'm guessing it's going to kind of look like the way things look after you cast the Rogue Death Knight, right? Where they get a little ethereal looking, so you kind of under, understand that it's going away. That that's where my um, brain takes it as well. But yeah, basically, I mean, if you have ten mana, you could cast this ten times. Hmm. That seems really good. That's oh man, I'm really. I mean, it's expensive this for card. evolve because think about evolve right now. It costs one mana and it hits all the minions on the board, right? Right. So now you're definitely paying more, but you get to kind of pick and choose where to stop and start your evolving, right? Mm -hmm. And if you don't get a result you like, you just do it again and again and again. So that's not bad. That, I, that's I think that's the reason why this could possibly pre be pretty good, and it's just another evolve tool. So you're already doing it. Why not do it as many times as feels yep. good? <laughs> because you know sometimes you play that evolve deck and you just never draw evolve or the death knight, right? And you end up with like doppelgangsters in your hand that are just you dead can't cards. do anything with. Yeah, They're just yeah five mana three two twos, and it sucks, you know. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's uh, it's just another good tool for them, and I feel like this is just getting slotted right on in to the current evolve list. Yep. All right, on to Warlock. I'm so excited about what's going on with Warlock. Okay, let's kick things off with their legendary weapon, which was actually revealed today. This is the Skull of the Menari. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. That's what I'm going yeah, with. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> cool. It's a five mana. Zero attack, three durability, legendary warlock weapon that reads, at the start of your turn, summon a demon from your hand. I missed so yeah, the turn warlock. you play it, it does nothing. And then, at the start of your next turn, a minion comes down. So then that minion will have summoning sickness. Okay. So, yeah. So there's a, there's a few things here that are, you know, pitfalls a little bit. 
Um, well, I mean, said, but you could get this with like um, Doom Guards and sure. you know all the stuff that deals all the damage to your hero. Like all the negative battle cries are just yep. gone, right? And yeah, again, there's a lot of bad, bad, uh, bad battle cries and demons, and suddenly you don't have them. But then you still have those demons in your deck, and this is the this is a legendary, so it's the only way to get them out without that, unless yeah. you're in wild. Well, yeah, but you're, you're playing Doom colors, Guards but, anyways, right? Yeah. <laughs> sure. Yeah. yeah, a lot of them. Run, a lot run of them you play anyways. anyways. Yeah. So it's, I mean, yeah, this feels, look, any way where you can cheat out stronger minions than you should have on that turn is obviously a thing, right? People, if you can do that, people will do that. So you'll see like big warlock essentially with a bunch mm -hmm. of demons and they'll just get out, you know, yeah. And wild Malganus, uh, you can get out, you know, your cruels and um, your, your really, really powerful demons without paying the price or without paying the mana cost. I, I don't know. Yeah. There's well, a lot of good things it about never, this. It's, it's another one of these zero three weapons that doesn't lose durability. So yep. just sticks around until just, they destroy it. You're just constantly going to be, you know, like demons, 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 demons for free. Uh, seems good. <laughs> sure. Yeah. And like we're getting some pretty cool demons getting at it as well. So uh, especially, and especially ones that you probably don't want to pay the full cost for. So, yep. yeah, I think we'll definitely see like I'm going to definitely give this a go. Um there's just so many ways to make a, a demon centric warlock awesome, and especially now with Blood Reaver Gul'dan, like I just bring them all back at some point. So yeah, I get them all out for free, and then at some point I bring them back again, and that's pretty crazy. It, it, D demon lock was one of my all time favorites, going all the way back to like GVG. So anytime I see something like the, anything even close to this come around, I'm excited for it. Even though sure. I, I'm I'm hesitant, uh, as you are, Dills, for all of the reasons you gave. Uh, but I don't care, man. It's like this card was made for me. Well, the thing you got to also understand, too, is like most classes probably can't afford to do nothing on turn five to then start having like awesome stuff happen afterwards. Mm -hmm. But Warlocks have insane amounts of removal now. So they could probably take a turn off and then recover and start playing free demons, right? And they're getting more removal. Yeah. <laughs> insane <laughs> removal, too. They are getting more <laughs> removal. But before we get on to that... Uh, let's talk about Void Lord, which is a 9-mana, 3-9 epic warlock demon with taunt, but also a death rattle that reads summon three one three demons with taunt. I mean, it sucks to pay 9 for, but we just talked about a way to pay <laughs> nothing for it. <laughs> and, <laughs> and if then, you, you get know, it for then, free. Like, later on, you get it back again. Yeah, with, blood with Gul'dan. Blood dead, so, yeah. It's, going in my, it's going in my big warlock that doesn't exist yet. Sure, it's very possible that this is just super good uh, in that style of deck, but I don't think you're going to want to play a couple of these and then and then the plan is to pay nine for it, right? No, right. you want to try and cheat them out however you can. Yeah. Yeah, Void Lord, cheat these out. Void Lord and I are gonna we're gonna go party in wild for a little bit, and we'll let you know how that party went. <laughs> it's gonna go great, I bet. <laughs> The thing is, too, like it, when you when you do Blood Reaver Gul'dan, one of the things you want because you pay you pay ten mana for it is you want to make sure you don't die the very next turn. So a three nine Taunter is going to prevent that from happening, right? Especially a three nine yeah. Taunter that battle or that death rattles out three more Taunters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, dog. I heard you like Taunters. Hard to hit your face after that. So then, when you assuming that your opponent can somehow get rid of the three nine and then the other one threes they all come back when you go down because they're all demons right you'd get the three nine yeah i mean it sounds like you're gonna the space is gonna be the biggest issue at that point yeah <laughs> because you're gonna Which, have a deck full of already the problem i run into with blood river Gul'dan, but <laughs> Which, there's much worse problems to have in a game of hearthstone than oh no i have too many yep. minions that are currently mm -hmm. alive yep <laughs> yeah that's definitely not not the biggest so, issue yeah it's just it's just a just the nine man three nine is the problem that I see with this card. So mm -hmm. yeah, the, the cheating it into play is the important part. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. And, and the death rattle, like if, if that was a battle cry, you just look at this and go like, yeah, I'll pay nine mana for that right now. But you have to sure. again, you have to wait. You have to hope that they don't have a way to get around the death rattle. Yeah. So, well, let's talk about some new warlock removal cataclysm. It's a four mana epic warlock spell that reads destroy all minions. Discard your hand. Ooh. Literally yeah. Deathwing without the dragon. I love it. I love the <laughs> yeah. theming here so much. Yeah. 
Deathwing caused the cataclysm. And yeah. I was going to say, Deathwing yeah, guys, does. if you're not familiar with Warcraft, Deathwing was the cause of the cataclysm. <laughs> yep. Yeah, this card just makes a lot of sense in lots of different ways. Yeah. Uh, th this seems like a card that maybe makes the Warlock quest somehow possible now because you could just kind of get it all done at once with and, you know, because people were playing Deathwing in that deck, but the problem with Deathwing was you had to wait until you had 10 mana to, like, yeah. pull that off. You could do this now on, like, the actual turn, like, because, uh, you know, people had talked, if you play the quest on one, then you tap, tap, and then Cataclysm, you will just complete the quest. Right. right. And then the next turn, you have five mana, you play the quest, and now you're a warlock, and you probably can clear things off. And then sometimes you have uh, silver golems in your hand when you cast Cataclysm, and you just play the three threes. Sometimes you have Clutch Mother... Uh, Z Zaris? What is Clutch Mother's name? I don't know. I can't you know the remember. One I'm about. The, yeah, the one you discard and then it gets yeah. buffed every and time you comes discard back. it. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes it comes you have back, that yeah. one too. Like So sometimes the discarding isn't even bad for you. Mm -hmm. This and, seems like the missing link to making that kind of deck maybe possible, right? So. Uh, Hachikumo is saying that if you have the imp on board, uh, Malkazar's imp that lets you, when you discard stuff, then you draw cards. So you can mm -hmm. actually, if it's on board when you cast Cataclysm, you'll discard your hand and refill really okay oh yeah because you would <laughs> seems good <laughs> you would draw for that's each really card good. that you yeah. discarded yeah. that's just nasty sure i mean you could even wait till turn five play that uh imp first and then play cataclysm and make sure you draw your hand back right so this is yeah i think this is a good this is a really good card if that's how that works then yeah that's sick yeah yeah, I, 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 I cautiously, I'm like, am I missing something here? Because I'm in that boat. I'm like, oh my god, do I finally get to play the Warlock quest and not not lose? Uh, <laughs> like, is it going to work? But uh, I don't know. I feel well, like... Well, and that's the, the thing with the Warlock quest and, and always summoning the minions. Like, you needed that earlier in the game, and this totally does that. Like, you just, yep. now you get it when you need it, so... Seems good. Oh, Tamron's bringing up a good point. Uh, the Cataclysm says you destroy your minions, so would it kill the the imp before the the cast or the discard happened, which would mean you wouldn't actually draw cards. You wouldn't. I don't. Yeah, I don't know. But you're still yeah, a warlock, depends. so you can't still tap. <laughs> so destroying your hand so is not the end of the. Spell. It actually does. Yeah. If if Deathwing is the example for why it would work that way, then there's different text on that because that one says destroy all other minions and discard your hand all at once. True. In one sentence. This, this has a period between sentences. the two. So yeah. So maybe it is may destroy not work that and way. then discard. Yeah. Mm. Destroy all means full stop. Needs discard your hand. Yes. We need some science. <laughs> Someone light the toast signal. <laughs> light it. All right. Let's start. Well, about... You know, like the, so. There's a there's a card in Eternal. It's a two mana three three, and it reads: When a minion dies, you take a day. Like when a friendly minion dies, you take one damage or whatever. So or just when a minion dies, that player takes damage. If that minion itself dies, like you, you end up taking the damage. Even though the minion dies first, and then like from the graveyard, it like comes back and like pokes you in the face. So I mean, there is <laughs> precedence in card games that that's how things work. Like effects that were on the board can still occur even though they've moved into the graveyard. I, 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 don't know, we'll I, I would argue that effects in other games uh, would mean that Hearthstone would most likely do the opposite. <laughs> sure, sure. Uh, let's talk about the Warlock Spellstone. It's the Lesser Amethyst Spellstone. It's a four-mana rare Warlock spell that has lifesteal, deal three damage to a minion, take damage from your cards to upgrade. So uh, not your hero power. Hero Correct. power will not upgrade this. Correct. So you have but to your flame imps and, yeah, all and of the, the other. two cards yeah. we just got added as well. This seems right. very easy to upgrade. Uh, and if you do upgrade it once, you, you keep that life steal. It deals five damage to a minion. And if you upgrade it a second time, it still keeps that life steal and deals seven damage to a minion. Yeah. So it's more removal and it's healing, which is something warlocks want. They just want removal and healing. So let's pack that all into one card, why don't we? I just yep. want to go on record as saying this is the coolest looking spell stone. I actually think the lesser version is my favorite. Let me it go. does like it looks like it's the most impressive when it's the lesser oh, version. Oh, you're totally right. Yeah, you're yeah. 100 percent right. But it's I I get it. I get it. It's like it's unlocking and opening. It's yeah, it's opening up and and you see all the runes and stuff and it's getting more powerful. But it looks more impressive when it's all closed up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I would I would rather having you know having that hanging around my 
hanging around my necklace while I listen to Ludacris. <laughs> uh, you, you yeah, could, so, but, like what's happening is just like breaking away all of its cool packaging. That's what's yeah, happening here? Pretty much, yeah. Great? Yeah. It's exploding with power. Okay. All right. You can't handle this package. Well, so this is actually this is I mean, this is fine even at four mana, to be quite honest. It's like not terrible. Or the, I mean even at the first the, even at the first, the first iteration, iteration, excuse me. Yeah. yeah. Uh, just deal three and heal for three. It's not terrible. And then yep. once you upgrade it once, it's like, wow, suddenly this is really good. Yep. Well, and especially if you're dealing damage to your hero in order to activate it, the fact that it has lifesteal on it, it's like you're undoing all the negative that you had to yeah. do to get it there in the first place. So. And you've also probably done, because of the damage you've taken from your cards, you've done brokenly powerful things right. while doing those, while playing those cards. Right? Yeah, let's yeah. talk about some of those new brokenly powerful things you'll be doing, like playing a 2-4 for 2 mana, the Vulgar Homunculus, which is a new common warlock demon that also has taunt, uh, but when it comes out, it has a battle cry that deals 2 damage to your hero. That seems pretty good. Yep. Yeah, that's... Uh... That's not a big drawback to play a two mana two four with taunt, because if you think about it, you take two, but then you prevent four. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> or maybe even more. You know, if they have to run a big minion into it. So. Mm -hmm. Yep. Seems really good. Yeah, and then you like flame imp into this bad boy, and like you just you have super strong board on turn two. Why yeah. flame imp when you can play Kobold Librarian, another new warlock minion that's a one mana two one common with a battle cry that draws you a card while simultaneously dealing two damage to your hero. There you go. I love this art because his name is the librarian, but he looks so confused by books. He's also <laughs> setting the books on fire behind him with a candle on his head because he's he's looking upwards, I'm assuming, at a stack of books, or possibly Medivh yeah. giving him the finger for burning his books. This is yeah. great. It's is amazing. That first Nazi card. <laughs> oh god. Come on, Jules. <laughs> So but yeah, like I think you run. I think in this type of deck, you run this and you run flame imp, right? And like this, this, think about this: for one mana, you get a two one, and you go, and you hero power. Yes. What? <laughs> like. <yeah. laughs> yep. That was really good. It's, it's solid. It's I'm so stoked for Warlock after seeing the cards this week, mm -hmm. most of which shown yeah, by Toast. Some powerful cards. Yep. Most of which, which is crazy because you think about you know Warlocks kind of always historically gotten weaker cards than everybody else because their hero power is really good but they have fallen off quite a bit as just a class right just mm -hmm. they're not as good as they <laughs> once were so it's okay i think in this particular expansion to give them a little more power back which is crazy to me because they fell off when reno rotated this spring <laughs> so they fell off fell off and they're still powerful guldan is super powerful uh like um uh blood reaver guldan i mean is super powerful so it's like they fell off for like ungoro <laughs> <laughs> yeah, There's well, and, yeah. They don't need more help. <laughs> yeah, well, no, I mean, you're right. But I'll, I mean, at the same time, everyone's been, everyone has found a deck that works for them for the most part this year. That's been our, our running compliment all mm. year. Yeah. You know, we ev with every step we take on the show, we go, it was still no tournament mode. But hey, the meta is healthy. <laughs> I mean, it's been the running, uh, running discussion on the show. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So Hunter's fine. I love my mid-range mid -range Hunter right now. It's not the best. They could use a bump. I'll give you that. But at it's least... not seeing a lot of high competitive play, no. Yeah. But people are still doing okay with it on the ladder, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. But anyways, moving along, we have one, count it, one warrior card to discuss today. But it is a legendary minion. It's Geosculptor, Geosculptor Yip, which is an <laughs> eight mana... 4-8 Legendary Warrior Minion. That reads, at the end of your turn, summon a random minion with cost equal to your armor, in parentheses, up to 10. So basically, they're just saying you can't get uh, you know, 11 mana giants and 12 mana giants and 25 mana giants. Um, but that's fine. <laughs> I I that, yeah, that's, it seems those. kind of odd that they'd make that distinction because, I mean, like, you'd have to have a very specific amount of armor like you'd have to have exactly 25 armor right because there's no like 23 cost cards and 24 cost well, I, cards I think, like i think the distinction is here so that if you had say 23 armor you would still actually get a minion right mm. because if it just literally said that and then it just summoned you a 10 cost minion you'd be like what why <laughs> like, i'm at 23 <laughs> uh so yeah it's i think it's a pretty damn good card uh for eight mana you 
you know, four eight is bad, but you always get at least one minion. Right. And if you build a deck that's meant to gain a lot of armor, it probably isn't that hard as a as a warrior to have, you know, some a decent amount of armor. Of, yeah. And I th- then they I have like to kill it. Anywhere because it just keeps doing it, right? So Yeah. Anywhere above like probably even four mana or well, four yeah, what armor, would a four eight be worth? Probably, that, yeah, like a four that's eight like worth like seven. Yeah, honestly. it's probably like, six or seven on its own. And then so basically if you have four armor, you're doing something super broken. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And ra- and random, you know, random ten cost minions are generally pretty good. You're gonna get like Yasharaj and Death yeah. and all that kind of stuff. So um yeah, and then if you get eight, that's pretty good. Nine is going to be pretty good. Uh, you know, sometimes down lower, it's going to kind of suck, but it's still just going to be a 4-8 plus another minion, right? And yeah. the 4-8 has to be killed. It has to be dealt with. It has eight health, so that can be a problem sometimes. So, yeah. holy crap. Warrior got a really good control tool back. To, he really to, did, you know, yeah. Put the pressure on. I agree, and there's still so many warrior cards to come. Who knows what else is, is lurking uh, well, the other, down the road the for warrior. Well, the other thing is, too, it's summon a random minion it's not recruit so this very specifically doesn't pull from your deck so yeah yeah, you're always going to get this effect it's not like the recruit cards where it's like when you have no minions of that cost left in your deck you can't recruit anymore this literally will just it's an engine that'll keep going Mm -hmm. just Mm -hmm. seems good and i like that we keep saying that today so uh uh bring it on plus this on turn 10 Yep. You, like even if you have zero armor, you, you play this, and then you go up to ten armor, and then you get a ten drop. I mean, you do make their you know minions cheaper, but pff, whatever. I've got yep. a four eight and a ten a ten and a drop. Ten now. minute, yeah. So what up? And I have ten health or ten extra <laughs> health because I have ten armor now at least. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Seems good. All right, we're in the neutrals, guys. We're in. The, we've made it through the class cards. Home stretch. <laughs> Home stretch, indeed. Grand Archivist is up next. This is an eight mana, four, seven, epic neutral minion. And at the end of your turn, cast a spell from your deck. Targets chosen randomly. I like this. <laughs> <laughs> I know, Garrett, you probably hate it. But yeah, it's I not like my it. jam. It's definitely not my jam. <laughs> yeah, you're probably going to be playing specific spells Very if you're doing specific, this, yeah. so... Like, you know, they might like, let's say you put this in a mage, you probably are running, uh, you know, Kabbalist tomes and flame strikes and blizzards, yeah. and you only ever cast those and things that aren't targeted spells. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. So yeah. it doesn't say, like, it doesn't say recruit on here. So it's not taking the spell from your deck. Is no, it? it is actually. It uh, is. Okay. They confirmed that it oh, actually like pulls, oh. it casts its spell from your deck. So it pulls, it doesn't say cast a copy of it, it's just cast the actual Right. Mm. So it's casting the spell. So it does thin your deck. Mm hmm. I wanted to say recruit spell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It could just say recruit spell and then cast with random targets. I mean, I guess it could. That, recruit a spell and cast it? Yeah. That'd be fine, but too. Then it's but this wording weird. is okay. Just, I don't really yeah. care. <laughs> I feel like recruit really, it just, it feels like a minion word. So I feel like, it. yeah, it would be kind of confusing, even though that's literally what you're doing. It's just a, it's a weird word yeah, <laughs> when you apply it to a spell. <laughs> nitpicky at the end of the day. I'm not that. Mm. Uh, I don't care that much. I'm not sure how much Grand Archivist will will see play because I know if I, I include it, it will. I don't think it'll see any play <laughs> to be quite honest. <laughs> yeah, because I know if I play it, it's like it, a fun it's gonna... little meme type card you can have a good time with. But yep. competitive real play, no, nah, I don't think so. Yep, because every time I play uh, it, it's gonna hit me. <laughs> Before we move on, did we talk about King Togwaggle last week? I don't week? think we did. I don't oh, think did we, we miss did. Him? We missed King Togwaggle. My bad. Yeah. Yeah. All the kobolds look the same to me. Oh. Well, this uh, one is uh, very different. Yeah. King yes. Togwaggle is an eight mana five five with a uh, so this is a legendary neutral minion with a battle cry that reads, "Swap decks with your opponent. Give them a ransom spell to swap back." And the, so the ransom, ransom spell, spell is a five mana swap the decks back card. It's just a spell. And it uh, and it goes directly into their hand, right? Yep. So, so they don't then, have to draw it. Right? Yeah, but then they play, pay five mana to get their deck back. Yeah. And they so don't you're like forcing them to pay five to to get the deck back while you're yeah. playing a five five. But what are you paying for? Like it's probably you're paying about four for this ability because a five five 
really is like maybe four and a half mana's worth of, mi- yeah. of minion. Um, so you're not getting like a huge discount on the whole swapping it back. That being said, this, this is just a super fun card. Like it's that's the point of it, right? I've had yeah. all these people come at me with like, oh my god, they finally made Explore Ungoro good again. And I'm like, okay, how? And then they tell me this whole convoluted thing about <laughs> how you're going to like give your opponent Explore Ungoro. But my argument is they're just going to cast the Ransom then the next turn. And, and then you're you stuck Ungoro with, yeah, yeah. then yeah. you're stuck exploring Ungoro. Yeah. yeah. So, no, I don't think that's actually a thing, but. No, you, you, you. <laughs> yeah, and then, oh, then I see all this about Geist. Yeah, sure. But do you understand, like, Geist costs mana itself. You have to, <laughs> they got on the very next turn, they get to just give the deck back, right? Also, they just get to yeah. give you Explorer Ungoro back or whatever, yeah. right? So. Yeah. So. Yeah. Or, or if you t- yeah, if you turn your own deck into it, they just don't cast ransom, and they just I don't know, they just keep their deck, or they keep your deck. I don't know. This, just like this, nah, it's not gonna happen. This is what Yogg-Saron should have been—a poster child for Hearthstone, but not actually good. Mm. Yeah, and this—I mean, I'm definitely gonna play this in my milkshake deck just because I think it'll be hilarious. Um, but do I expect it to actually do stuff? Mm. No, probably not. Yeah. <laughs> nope. 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 Oh, now chat room's talking about pairing it with that priest dragon. Yeah, if I pair it with the priest dragon, <laughs> yeah. okay, sure. But first I have to give them two turns. And but then, then I yeah, have to get this. two turns, yeah. Then I have to do this crazy, ridiculous combo that yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've had like three dead cards in my hand setting up. So. <laughs> and this is somewhere I have to have Explorer and Goro in my priest deck. So yeah. good luck there. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, not completely impossible. <laughs> You can mind vision it or something. Yeah, sure, yeah. So I You're think the... the other guy has to be playing it. Oh yeah. my god, this is gonna happen all the time. I would expect totally reliable thing to build a deck around. I would expect the the creator of the milkshake deck to be a little more enthusiastic about. Look, I'm enthusiastic with the card. It's not that specific combo that people keep trying to sell me on. No, I'm gonna just do fun stuff with it. I'm you just can... gonna give them my milkshake deck and then force them to have to like pay to to get their deck back. Uh, and then yeah, and then you know. They won't be able to know how to play that deck because nobody knows how to play that deck. <laughs> well, this is what happens when you build the Church of the Milkshake. Mm-hmm. This is what happens. Your followers will will inform you of completely bonkers things to try and sure. try and accomplish. Uh, let's uh, move right along to Spiteful Summoner, a six mana four four epic neutral minion with a battle cry that reveals a spell from your deck. Summon a random minion with the same cost. So not cast the spell. This no, Correct. your spell goes back in, and this isn't even joust because you don't see something. You don't compare it to the other guy. Yeah, there's you no just chance. Always show a spell and then cast a minion. Yeah, there's there's no chance to get nothing from this, which minion. which joust does give you the chance yeah. for, for to get nothing besides the card you played. So this you literally you're just showing them like, eh? eh, look at that, look at that, and then whatever that costs, you get a random minion associated with that cost. So is this another potential burn mage card? Yeah, I like, think so. Does my pyroblast get a ten drop? <laughs> yeah, it's better. Well, you'll still be running, at least for the next four months. We'll still be running uh, Firelands portals, Firelands, right? Yeah. So, yeah, you'll be running fireballs, Firelands portals, and pyroblast, and probably not a ton of other spells. You you might have things like Blizzard and Flame Strike in there, and those will be fine too, right? So, yeah, you know. Also, think about yeah, Rogue with Ultimate Infestation. Or, I mean, a druid with ultimate infestation, yep. and maybe warlock with some pretty high cost spells. Boosting um, nether and boosting nether and maybe so, yeah, like this doom. might be a thing. <laughs> might be a thing. Yep. If you're not and running even, low cost okay, spells, chat room saying cut frost bolts. So even if you reveal the frost bolt, you'd be getting a four four and a two drop. It right? wouldn't be terrible, yeah. So yeah, yeah it, it still wouldn't be terrible. It wouldn't be the end of the world. It's certainly on the lower end of what you would hope to get out of this out of the right. summoner, but you, it's not like you you just grossly overpaid for what you accomplished. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That being said, a card that's kind of summoning random minions like this usually hasn't made it into competitive decks, so I'm a little hesitant to say that it's actually going to happen. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's going to be times when you know, in, in Arena, you're going to have a couple of decently expensive spells, and this card will pop up, and you'll be like, oh, hell yeah, let's go. Yeah. So th- this card will be around. You will see it happen from time to time. Mm-hmm. Arcane Tyrant is next. It's a 5-mana, 4-4 four, four epic neutral elemental minion that costs 0 if you've cast a spell that costs 5 or more this turn. 
Yeah. All right. I mean, five or more cost spells are not that rare, and now I just get the pair of uh, free four four with that. Okay. And it's yep. an elemental, so. Mage deck. And I'm trying elemental to make mage elemental deck. mage work. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. I'm I don't really see good. why this wouldn't see play. <laughs> Am I missing well, yeah, something? Well, yeah, you've got Ireland's portals, flame strikes, blizzards, pyroblasts. Um, yeah. I, I mean, feel like I'm missing see, one, we but see I feel Solia, like Mage Master is just, just like, get duh. Yeah. But you don't have to build your deck around the Ink Master Solia thing, right? Yeah. So instantly better. Yeah. Yeah. Plus, we we just talked about the Spiteful Summoner. I feel like if you're having fun and trying to build around that card, Arcane Tyrant goes in that deck. Yep. Elemental Mage. Feels good to look at a neutral and just go, yeah, using that <laughs> card. All right, Hungry Etten is next. This is a six mana, four ten. Uh, this is a rare neutral minion with taunt and a battle cry that reads, summon a random two cost minion for your opponent. You can have it. That's fine. You can have that two cost minion. Yeah, this is better than like a Hungry Dragon. Um, yep. Which summoned a one cost minion. So, yeah, I think you'll definitely see this in, like, Arena quite a bit. It'll be picked pretty often. I don't think you're going to see this in Constructed, though, just because people don't generally just play, like, these types of minions that are just big, you know, bigly statted. They kind of do mm -hmm. more specific things. So. Ten health is so much, though. It is a lot of health. With and, a, and of course, a four ten amount taunt. of attack. Yeah, with yeah. A de like, it still has that four damage, which I feel like, you know, that's it's enough. It's just over <laughs> the cusp. Especially on turn six. Yeah, it's just over the cost. If it was three, I'd be looking yeah. at it like, oh, I'm not going to get anything done with three. Right. But Yeah, but four at, on turn six, four damage seems into something that they pretty much have to run minions into. Seems like it's going to get some work done. So I'm interested to see if this actually sees any kind of play. And it's, and it, I, I mean, we got to. Maybe in a taunt druid or taunt warrior? I think taunt, taunt druid, maybe, yeah. Uh, yes, and then also just uh, you know talk about the free to play or the budget community as well. I mean, when we remember when we were first getting reports of folks like you know Trump making free to play wins the legend, it was all about stuff like Yetis. So I think I think Hungry Etten could find could find play in in budget decks as well. When you're like, oh well, I don't have all of these epics and legendaries. What do I slot in? Sure. Well, there's this 410 rare <laughs> that has yeah. a slight drawback. Yeah, yeah, and, and you could also gonna, it's gonna live most of the time, right? So, mm -hmm. you get to and do stuff uh, with it. chat room is pointing out with the ten health, it could be really good for your divine spirit inner fire priest deck. Um, yes, there's a chance to get a doomsayer, but I mean, there's so many two cost minions that that chance is quite small. So, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm interested in hungry yet, and, and definitely you're gonna be seeing this in arena. I agree with you, Dills. Uh, let's talk about Lone Champion. Three mana, two, four, rare neutral minion with a battle cry that reads, if you control no other minions, gain taunt and divine shield. I'm, That's not a very hard uh, thing to pull off. Nope. Having no other minions. No, right? yep. no, so, it is not. What's the, oh God, shaman minion that, uh, what, three mana, four, four, freezes your other minions. If you don't have minions on board, who cares? That's just the, that's just the neutral minion. Oh, that's a neutral it? minion. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I don't know why I thought it was a shaman minion. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's it's kind of a similar idea. Um, you know, like if you can play this by itself, obviously, then it's really good. A three mana two four with taunt and divide shield, it's gonna soak up quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And uh yeah, I think it's just it's a, it's weird because it's a neutral card, it looks like a paladin card, doesn't it? Yep. It looks like that's admirable. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good point. Holy <laughs> crap, it kind of does. Yeah. But yeah, it's like it clearly is a paladin on the art. Um, yes, yeah. But yeah, you get to play it in any class. But it's uh yeah, it's pretty cool. I think this card is going to be a great arena card and we'll see if you put it in any actual constructed decks. I'm not sure yet. Cuz again, it's like yeah, you put a strong minion on the board, but it doesn't do anything, right? Mm -hmm. it just is a minion. Yeah. Most of the time people want their minions to like do stuff. So. I'm running Divine Shield buff in my Paladin, which I kind of, which I already am. I consider it. I'm thinking about it. I'll say that much. I'm thinking about it in a Paladin deck. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, if you play this, and then you can Rallying Blade, or you can Kings it, or whatever. Like, yeah, yeah. You'll do all sorts of cool stuff with it. Yeah. 
Yeah. Also, you're looking good. That's admirable. Clearly, you've been lifting and doing some CrossFit because <laughs> holy crap. He has been losing a bunch of weight. He is yep. a svelte man these days. Yeah. <laughs> Although, I mean, the, the lone champion looks like it walked out of StarCraft in terms of shoulder size. So. <laughs> uh, next is another neutral mini that looks like it belongs in a paladin deck the silver vanguard which is a 7 mana 3-3 three, three common neutral minion with a death rattle that recruits an 8 cost minion it's a death rattle <laughs> I don't know about this one we kicked yeah. off today I can't only remember the card's name anymore all the way up to the top it was grizzled guardian the, the 8 mana uh, druid card that had the death rattle to recruit 2 minions that cost 4 or less all, everything we said about that card uh, for this card as well. Yep. Pretty much, yeah. You have to pay seven mana for a 3-3, three, three, and then when it dies, you, you have to be running several 8-drops that are good, and you're... I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I'll just pass. Yep. Again, it depends on the meta, I think. If everything slows way, way down, maybe we are seeing decks that have multiple 8-cost minions. Because, again, recruit means... By the kind of mid to late game, you have to still have those eight cost minions in your deck, so you can't yeah. like can't take the chance of only having one eight cost minion that you draw through your first seven turns, right? <laughs> like nope. you want that to stay buried, so you probably are going to need two, maybe even three eight cost minions that are mm -hmm. decent. So yeah, and then you yeah, and then you have to like let's say you and do you pay draw the, them, the cost and of playing a three three, yeah, Ugh. Ugh. nope. Yeah. <laughs> now this card, uh, this card is bad. Just a bad card. <laughs> Don't. Not playing it. All right, we're wrapping today up with a dragon, the hoarding dragon. It's a four mana five six common dragon, uh, with a death rattle that reads, "Give your opponent two coins." So you get a five six out. I love out the design of this card for four, yeah. but you're giving your opponent two coins. Yeah. So giving your opponent, so if you think about it, you're getting like one more mana worth of stats on a four drop, but then you end up giving your opponent two mana, but that's a little delayed because it's a death rattle, right? So first mm -hmm. they have to like kill this thing, then they'll get those two coins. So you're kind of like paying one mana to for future tempo, um, but you get the tempo for you get the tempo upgrade first, right? It's kind of like neutral invisible overload. It's like you're setting yourself yeah, back. Okay. Uh, in comparison to your opponent, I, th I think that's fair. It's yeah. around about um, way. Yeah, there's a couple fences to hop over, but they're low fences. I, I, I'm connecting sure. dots. Okay. <laughs> but think about like King Mukla was better than this, right? It was a three mana five five, and you gave your opponent two one cost spells that they had to put on their own minions to even utilize. <laughs> Giving your opponent two coins is so easy to just use anytime. Uh, plus, like, let's say they were able to kill it, like, the very next turn. Then the turn after that, they're basically playing, like, an 8-drop or something on turn 6. Like, it's, right. you know, I don't know. I think the drawback is too big, so you probably only see this in Arena. But I've heard people talk about all these things, like, oh, I mill your deck or whatever. It's like, well, coins help them to prevent you from hands. milling, yeah. right? Because <laughs> they can play more cards out of their hand. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't think a mill deck isn't really the thing for it, so. No. I think it's just a bad card for constructed and a decent card for arena because sometimes you'll just get the five six and then you'll just stay ahead on board. And they for have a while. less removal, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I'm with Hachikumo in the chat room. It says Dell's secret to success: use Hoarder and Dragon to fill your opponent's hand up with coins before you play King Togwaggle. Well, okay. The problem is they can just use can. those coins next turn. And yeah, yeah. No, sorry, <laughs> these arguments. Are, there's yeah. a reason why there's a cap. There, there's a cap of face. There's a cap of face. <laughs> yeah. and I tried to deliver it in a cap of fashion. <laughs> Your cap needs work, Kurt. <laughs> oh, Paris. Sorry, I'll, I'll get more on the nose of my sarcasm in the future. Um, yeah, no, but it's, it's really cool card. Uh, I like having to kill the dragon to get the treasure. Yeah. Oh yeah, flavor wise, lore wise, this makes so much sense. Mm -hmm. Kill the dragon, get the treasure. I like it, but I don't know if it's playable. I don't think so either. I'll definitely, I'll, I'll be picking it up in arena. I'm sure. Yeah. There'll be there'll be times where I'll be grabbing this. But uh, for, yeah, for now, I'm probably not finding a home in a constructed deck. Not on purpose. <laughs> I have one of those nights where you know you have one too many and you you drunk deck build. Don't drink and deck build, people. Don't drink and deck build. <laughs> So that's uh, that is it. We have made it through an obscene number of cards for today. 
We'll and see we're going to do it again next week. We are going <laughs> to do it again next week. Next so. week we'll have probably all the cards, right? Definitely. And then it comes out it's, on it's the Thursday out. after that. So. Yeah. So we next should. week. So how many cards have we had revealed so far? Uh, almost half. I, yeah, I feel like we're below half. We're still below yeah. half. So we're so next week is going to be just that's going to be the major dump. Yeah, we're going to either have to rapid fire or do two episodes. <laughs> yeah, cause we'll I feel like because, um, yeah, we did 35 cards today. So that was 100. And we did like, what, 12 cards from BlizzCon and 11 cards last week. So we've still got over 70 cards to cover. <laughs> so it's twice as much as this week. <laughs> next week. <laughs> yep. Yep, might just be the next two episodes of Angry Chicken coming at you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll figure that out when we get there, but uh, that's going to wrap it up for this episode. Thank you again to our patrons supporting us over at patreon.com slash TAC. Uh, hopefully you're uh, you're really digging these longer episodes, enjoying the card talk, and if you are and you're out there and you're not already a patron, the best way to support the show is by going to the Patreon and uh, and, and supporting us. Whatever works for you, 25 cents an episode, a dollar an episode, $2 an episode, so on and so forth. It all works. Uh, Got to thank our producers as well. Declan H., Michael N., Sean C., Johnny S., and LVE is back as an Angry Chicken producer. LVE, dude, thank you so much. Uh, find more of this podcast on amove.tv. You can find the whole back catalog on our YouTube, youtube.com slash amove.tv. There is only one episode that is not video, and it's like our fifth episode from BlizzCon. They're all on there. You can see <laughs> the evolution of uh, Jocelyn's hair, of my hair, and that like two week span where dills shaved his entire head it was it was weird guys i i'm not gonna lie it was weird <laughs> it freaked me out quite a bit quite a bit because those blonde the blonde eyebrows you, you think you shave your eyebrows but no it's just it's just dills hair color he's just a beautiful <laughs> yep. blonde man it's a beautiful blonde man uh we have anger chicken t-shirts you can pick them up at shirts.amove.tv we have custom etched glassware over at etched.amove.tv if you want to get yourself a pint glass or something similar to that fashion uh follow the show on twitter at tac podcast catch us live tuesdays at uh, 3 p.m eastern time over at twitch.tv slash amove tv at least for the time being although i'm kind of getting used to three o'clock i might petition to keep this time uh but <laughs> before we have that meeting dills where can folks find you around the web uh, check me out on Twitter. I'm at Willie Dills. Twitch.tv slash Willie Dills is my Twitch channel. And uh, you can check me out playing a lot of those. We're going to be a lot of hours time coming up in the next few weeks. So come check it out. Uh, and I will see everyone there. Rad. Jocelyn, how about yourself? Uh, you can find me on Twitter and Twitch. I'm at Joss Plays. Uh, you can also, if you're into World of Warcraft, I stream World of Warcraft rating. Uh, we're actually starting with Antorus tonight. The brand new raid just opened today, so uh, I'm really, really excited. So yeah, that's uh, twitch.tv slash Joss Plays for some WoW raiding fun times. Woot woot, but I haven't leveled my warrior in time and I hate my death knight. <laughs> Get on it, Garrett. <laughs> I have come to the conclusion that I hate my death knight. I don't like playing yeah. it. Uh, I'm on Twitter at Garrett Art, where uh, you can find me talking about how excited I am for things like Spell Joust and... Uh, and Star Wars, which is coming up in a couple of weeks. And every other podcast I do can be found over at amove.tv. Jocelyn and I, you are we are getting together tomorrow to do Embrace the Spoilers for Stranger Things Season 2. Yes, it's late, but we had other things to spoil ahead of it. Uh, we just did Justice League, which is a weird thing for me to promote. Uh, uh, you should go listen to me hating a movie. That's what you should go <laughs> listen to. Uh, and if you like Star Wars, let's talk about Star Wars. It's my Star Wars podcast. It usually happens once a month. It's happening twice a month right now. Find Let's Talk About Star Wars wherever podcasts can be found. That's going to wrap right, it up. Right, because the next, the next Star Wars is coming, like, soon, right? Two weeks. The 15th, Ooh. right? Two weeks. 15th, yeah. I've got uh, I've got uh, s tickets for 7 o'clock showing on the set on the 14th. I can't wait. Nice. I can't wait. Uh, trying to, I need to find out if we're going in costume, because that might be a thing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> whatever the case is, that's going to wrap it up for this episode. Thank you all for listening. I hope you all had a great Thanksgiving. If you're uh, of the turkey eating variety, and uh, until next time, job's done. Job's done. Job's done. Yes. <laughs>